Welcome to the Queens County School Board meeting for Wednesday, June the 1st, 2022. Do I have a motion to go into closed session? Pursuant to the general provisions, Article 3-305 and 3-104, the Board of Education of Queen Anne's County will meet in a closed session to discuss the appointment, employment, assignment, promotion, discipline, demotion, compensation, removal, resignation, or performance evaluation of appointees, employees, or officials over whom this public body has jurisdiction, any other personnel matter that affects one or more specific individuals, to consult with counsel to obtain legal advice, and to consult with staff, consultants, or other individuals about pending or potential litigation. I have a second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're going to close session. We're being back at six o'clock for our regular board meeting. Thank you. Welcome to the Queen Anne's County Board of Education meeting for June the 1st, 2022. Can we stand for the pledge? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, Indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Have, uh, everybody's had a chance to look at the agenda? Yes. Make a motion to accept the agenda as presented, sir. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. You've also had time to look at the uh, open sessions for May the 18th, our minutes. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the May 18th, 2022 open session minutes? Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Dr. Samuels. Yes. I'd like to invite up Mr. Page. Do you want us to? Yes, please. <laughs> We're going to do this by school. That's correct. So that, because it's a lot today. But I'd like to have a comment first. Good evening, everyone. Today we are celebrating the winners of the Agricultural Awareness Day essay contest. The students wrote essays in reflection of the 2022 Agricultural Awareness Days, events that were held on March 30th and 31st at the Queen Anne County 4-H Park in Fairgrounds. Students answered the question, how does agriculture affect your life every day? There were over 50 essays submitted from three participating schools. The essay contest was designed to assess the students' retention of the lessons and information imparted to them by the leaders in the local agricultural industry and community. Subjects taught at the event included crop production, aquaculture, agricultural me mechanics, and livestock production. The first place winner for each school and the overall Queen County Public School winner will receive a set of Apple AirPods because that was pretty important stuff right there. <laughs> so the first place winners from each school and the overall winner for Queen Anne's County Public Schools will receive a set of Apple AirPods, a first place certificate, and coupons for one ice cream cone and one snow cone per day at the 2022 Queen Anne's County Fair. That'll bring them out. Really important. That'll bring them out. The second place winner for each school will be awarded a second place certificate, a $50 cash award, and coupons, again, for ice cream and snow cones for each day of the fair. The third place winner from each school will be awarded a third place certificate, a $25 gift cash award, and coupons for ice cream and snow cones at the fair. So we are very, very proud of all of our students who participated and so very great, grateful for our partnership with you. And I'm going to turn over the mic to um, introduce the students. Hello and welcome everyone. So we're going to start off with Southersville Middle School. So I'd like to ask Mr. Watkins to come up. Principal. And we are going to announce the three winners to come on up. And we'll announce them first, second, and third. And then we'll take a picture with the three winners. Um, when we are done. So first place goes to Carter Her Hercher. Second, second place goes to Dahlia Aliet. Aliet. And third place goes to Kylie Kerr. Curry. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, one, two, three. Thank you very much. 
very much. Congratulations. The next school we'll uh, present the prizes to are is Stevensville, and we have Dr. Schreckengas. Come on up. Our first place uh, winner is Lucia Zacklin. Second place is Jack Owens. And third place is JC Frederick. Congratulations. Carla Reem to come up. First place goes to Brianna Layden. Second place goes to Trey Palmetry. And third place goes to Lincoln Palmer. Congratulations. Uh, the, the, the next one, we had an overall winner for the whole county, so out of all the essays, we had one winner, and uh, that goes to Elvin Reinhardt. from the Queen Anne's Volunteer Fire Department. If we could ask those gentlemen to come up if, you, if you're by yourself or if you have a couple people. And also anybody that's here from Queen Anne's County High School. I know that our, super, I mean our principal is here. I know they've been all been working hard. They're probably a little sunburned from today, from graduation. <laughs> so on behalf of the Board of Education and Queen Anne's County High School, we would like to personally thank you and the Queenstown Volunteer Fire Department for providing a fully staffed ambulance for both the men's and women's lacrosse games at Queen Anne's County High School this past season, the whole season. Our Queen Anne's County High School athletic trainer was on medical leave this past season and we were unable to secure a substitute to fill that position for the whole spring season. Um, which has been a national shortage, as I know that you know that very well. The Queenstown Volunteer Fire Department graciously stepped up and volunteered their BLS, which is? Uh, basic Life Support. Basic Life Support, thank you, services for the entire season. We would like to thank you for your dedication to our community and also to everyone at Queen Anne's County High School. So thank you so much for your partnership. <laughs> certificate it looks like we had a student that just showed up uh, is that student here she's not here oh she's not here okay. we were just making sure we, should, we, should, we thought we saw a student 
Okay, and now I'd like to move on to our Energizer Bunny. So I'd like to have um, Bayview Financial come up, Mr. Chip Birdingham and Mr. Wayne Humphreys with our goodies. If we can, and maybe we can break the bunny out of the bag and have her all ready to go. I'm not responsible. <laughs> so this award is given to a staff member or volunteer who keeps on going. It is sponsored, of course, by Bayview Financial. Thank you very much. Our June Energizer Bunny is Mr. Eric Wright. If you could please have him come. And I'm not sure if Amy Taylor is here, but Amy nominated. If Amy's here, yes, please do come up. Amy Taylor, Sutlersville Elementary School, third grade teacher, was our nomination nominating person this time. Mr. Wright runs the Queen Anne's County High School marching band and jazz band, as well as the concert band. This does not include any of his regular teaching duties. The dedication he shows to his students is unbelievable. Even during COVID-19 pandemic, students respond very well to him, and he is a wonderful role model to these young adults. Thank you so much. You're bringing back music in Queen Anne's County. recognize our Shining Star Award. This award recognizes someone in our school system who shines. Our June Shining Star is Sarah Williams, a fifth grade teacher. If she could please come forward. <laughs> no, that's great. And if Mrs. Carey will please come forward because she nominated her. William goes above and beyond on a daily basis. She is such an asset to Cunard Elementary School. Although she teaches fifth grade, she is our resident technology guru. And at a drop of a hat, will assist any of her teammates and any other staff member in the building. She is quick study and quite proficient in the area of technology. Additionally, she has been in the instruction, additionally, she has been instruction, instrumental, excuse me, at Cunard Elementary School for getting our sustainable green school certification and served on that team. She assisted in developing an exceptional website with our school artifacts and green school components. Mrs. Williams also serves as a fifth grade SIT representative and is very engaged with her input and suggestions for benefits of all the students. Last but not least, she serves as our PTA board as a staff and parent representative. She went above and beyond during Teacher Appreciation Week to make sure that our Canard Elementary School staff feel extra special. She is truly a shining star at Canard Elementary School. I'd like to recognize our Queen Anne's County Public School Spirit Award. This award is given to an individual who embodies the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Our June recipient is Katie Peternell. And she was nominated by Mrs. Jolene Smith, if she'll please come up. has been a staple of the special education leadership team and instructional and, and instrumental in the ongoing development of special programs within Queen Anne's County Public Schools. Mrs. Peter now brings to our teachers the highest professionalism, passion, and expertise. Her love for all students, but especially those with complex needs, is evident through her creative solutions and tireless efforts to create new and improved approaches and practices for our students and their classrooms. Mrs. Peter now continues to encourage growth and excellence for her teachers, which translates to new opportunities for her students. Katie truly embodies the spirit of Queen Anne's County Public schools. Congratulations.
minute break. We have other people that are speaking tonight, uh, so we'll take a five minute break and then re-adjourn. Yes. Thank you. Congratulations again. Thank yes. you, everybody. Congratulations. Um, and I hope positively they'll look at that for us so we don't have to readjust our budget at all. Also, I attended Ken Island, I'm sorry, Kennard Elementary School field day for my granddaughter, and um, very exciting. It was fun to see the kids, and I know it's, we have a lot of teachers in here seeing them outside playing and doing things, something we haven't seen for a while, and, and was talking to Miss Carey, says, you know, some of these kids haven't even thrown a ball or, or thrown anything for two or three years, and, you know, it, it, was, it was heartwarming to see these kids out there doing that now, and getting back to our, I say, new norm. So that was, that was very enlightening. And I'm sure as teachers, you all are getting back into it. We're seeing these kids, you know, changing a lot. So graduation today, Queen Anne's County uh, High School. This is the second one I've attended as a board member, and I, I'm really honored to do it. And it's so, so much fun uh, to hand out the diplomas and uh, to listen to all the, the smart remarks in the crowd from the kids. You know, they've got a great sense of humor. Um, very excellent speeches were given today. I enjoyed all those. We had a good laugh at a couple of those. Uh, very good sense of humor from the students, Ellen Victorians. And uh, it was uh, impressive to see the academic uh, achievements of the students as well as the uh, uh, vocational achievements of many of them. Saw a lot of uh, uh, literacy <laughs> awards, et cetera. So congratulations to all those. Uh, I look forward to attending Ken Island tomorrow. I also had an opportunity this past month to visit some of the schools. It had been a while since we did our initial school visits, and um, I, I wanted to make a point to see uh, all of the language teachers, if not some of the language teachers, the world language teachers. And I did. And uh, it's so important, and I would really like to see that portion of our curriculum get beefed up, world languages. If any uh, parents that are listening tonight, you know, if your student needs electives uh, in high school, whatever, to continue on through one, two, even three years of a world language is so beneficial. Um, when I was at Annapolis Senior High School, 1981, uh, I went into 10th grade and took the German course, and I liked it so much that I got into the French course. Fortunately, we had multiple languages there. And uh, the same teacher was my German teacher and my French teacher. So I had him for five years. He was also my cross country coach and assistant track coach. So I don't remember all my high school teachers, but I will never forget that guy. <laughs> and uh, so shout out to the world language teachers. Um, and I plan to get out to uh, most of the schools or all of them as I can this coming month, next couple of months in September. Well, again, I also attended the graduation and it was a lot of fun. Very impressive group of uh, young people. Um, I also was uh, wanted to give a shout out to Miss Emily Ald. I guess she's a sophomore at Kent Island High School. Is that correct? She won the Congressional Art uh, Show Award from uh, Congressman Harris's office. And that's pretty impressive. So I wanted to give a shout out to her. And also I went out to Sutlersville Ski Club uh, last month to see our clay target team and they are an impressive group of young people as well so that was a lot of fun um, and I wish them well I hope they do well the nationals Yes, and I echo all of the, because uh, I was able to get all of that. It's just a busy time of the year, so I get afforded the opportunity to see concerts and dance performances and, you know, graduations and everything. It's just amazing. Um, it, it's a great time, but I did finish up my principal meetings, which allows me to go into every school and walk with the principals in and out of classrooms, and it's just wonderful to see that sense of normalcy. So I'm um, very appreciative of those opportunities. So it's a busy, busy month. Thank you. Thank you. It's up there already at the top. 
up. It is up. Oh, I see it. Thank you. So good evening, uh, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, the rest of the executive team. Um, this is my last and final spotlight. So, um, so I'm very happy to bring you the um, highlights from the month of May. So the elementary schools, um, Bayside, they held a talent show. They had a variety of acts, 46 students participated. <coughs> Centerville Elementary School, a little bit of, of a story behind this. I'm in my office and I hear screaming one day. <laughs> Snickers from the Centerville people. Um, and I'm like, what is going on? I thought, what is the Catholic Church doing? Like, why are there people screaming? So I went out front and then I heard kids. So, so it was excited. this day, uh, the PTA sponsored a freestyle assembly. And you can see Mrs. Farnell sitting there. I, she's braver than I. Um, and then um, the school also collected good bags um, and donated them to the local uh, law enforcement. Um, Churchill Elementary School, this was an activity sponsored by Miss uh, Amanda Enzer, who is our family engagement specialist, and uh, PTA purchased donuts, and um, they had a, an author come in, and the book was surrounding worrying and things like that. So um, it was a great activity. I think there was some dancing involved, too. I think I saw that on social media. Um, Grayson Bell Elementary School, um, third and I received an invitation to go with the third graders to release the Terrapins um, down at uh, Poplar Island. I was not able to go, but I want to thank um, Ms. Susan Willis for um, offering me that um, invitation. Um, so they released them. Kindergartners um, learned about the chickens um, from hatch to grow, and first graders um, learned about animal habitats when they visited the um, Maryland Zoo. A lot of cool pictures there. <coughs> Kennard Elementary third graders took a field trip to the Saltian Education Foundation in Chestertown. Ken Island Elementary, um, you have a group of students to my left doing some yoga. Um, that's Mrs. Cornish. Uh, again, very impressed with uh, her limberness. You can see her doing <laughs> namaste. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then um, the kids also participated in the Ken Island art scene. And um, they went um, green for mental health awareness. So everybody wore green. Mattapeak Elementary, they had band and choir concerts. Um, and then students took advantage of um, some of the nice weather we're, we're having. On, I mean, today was extremely hot, but this was a beautiful spring day, unlike a hot summer day. Um, and then they had a storytelling assembly. Um, Sudlersville Elementary School, they did an MCAP assembly, and that's Miss uh, Kaylin Kovac. She received a pie in the face. I'm not sure of the whole background on that, but um, as just a celebration for um, doing a great job. And then they did bingo night as well. It was a family night. In our middle schools, Centerville Middle School did an African drum assembly. Mattapeak Middle, they had a, a, um, a dance, Friday night dance, and then they, um, the other picture is of Miss, or Dr. McCoy uh, for Teacher Appreciation Week. Stevensville, they did Madagascar, their spring concert. And Sudlersville Middle School, they did a, a rocket launch. And I'll let um, Dr. Salins share a little bit about this because she was there. She was, um, and it says right at the end, we even have special guests at, yeah. at the final workshop. It was so. so much fun. It really was fun. An opportunity, you actually build it from scratch and they give you all the parts and everything. And then you put an egg in it and then you shoot it off. And then you go retrieve it to see if your egg is still And attacked. Dr. Salins egg broke. No, it didn't. <laughs> I know. I knew she was going to say that. No, it didn't. <laughs> we, we had it for breakfast one. <laughs> so I knew I knew yours, you were very, I heard you were very excited that yeah. you did not break. Yeah. Um, so and then at the high schools, um, and I believe Miss Bennett, you referenced this as one of your activities oh. that the um, that you had attended. 
a while ago, um, but the Ken Island Stevens, didn't you, yes, wasn't I that did. you? Did yeah, Ken Island and Stevensville um, staff did a softball game. There was game. dancing involved there as well. Oh, yes. oh <laughs> I mean, without dancing, I mean, um, but the PTA sponsored that too. So it was parents, teachers, everybody working together. And then Queen Anne's County High School, they did a senior spirit week. Um, the only comment I have with this is that the boy who has the bald head, like John Treckengost, <laughs> is, um, I mean, I laughed when I saw that. That was an LOL moment. So do you see it? Yep. He has like a fake bald head mm -hmm. and a tie. So. And his walkie talkie. And and oh, he does have a walkie-talkie. I missed that detail. The other pictures are alternates to book bags. Anything but a book bag. Anything but a book bag. So you see a grill there, a baby carriage, and a trash can, and of course your um, cart. Cart. carts. Yeah, oh and God. a little <laughs> tractor. But anything but a book bag. And a boat. Yeah, yeah. and Shrek and Gosh Day. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so much fun. So anyway, and that is a wrap on May's spotlight. So all right. Now we'll move into uh, open forum. Tammy. We ask all speakers to keep in mind the following guidelines. Speakers should sign the roster, including their telephone number and address. Comments should be limited to three minutes in length. Comments longer than three minutes should be submitted in writing. Questions or statements to the board should relate to a matter of general policy over which the board has authority. Comments about actions or statements of individual staff members are not appropriate for public comment and should be referred to the superintendent of schools or board president. If you have a specific question, the board will make sure an appropriate staff member responds to your question. The board respects your desire and right to convey your message freely, but ask as a courtesy to this board and our citizens to show respect for all. The first person on the list is Mr. Richard McNeil. That one's lit up. Both of them are lit up. Mm -hmm. No, neither one. Neither McNeil, one. Thank you, sorry. Good evening, board members. <clears throat> My name is Richard McNeil, um, president still of the retirement group. Uh, I don't think they're gonna throw me out anytime soon, but um, just a couple comments tonight. One, I know it's the end of the year. Uh, I'd like to congratulate all those seniors who uh, graduated either today or well. And also wanna make sure that and I think uh, was mentioned about uh, we have a very strong technical vocational program it's not called vocational per se and sometimes that gets left behind when we talk about the number of people who are getting scholarships to go on to a four-year college and that's important but we have a lot of folks who are graduating certificated already in the third level mm -hmm. uh, of one two three and uh, in welding and, and cosmetology and all like that and it's, it's uh, a lot of our folks don't understand that that we do have that program we want to just make sure that um, also want to give a big applause to all those folks who are retiring this year um, you know they, they they've served in a capacity to help our children bus drivers custodians uh, teachers, uh, assistants, whatever. Um, my list uh, that I have has shows 31, uh, and I'm sure there'll be some more between now and then, and, and of course, Amy's on my list, so <laughs> we're gonna invite her in if she would like to join us. Um, it was great to hear, I, I guess, that the uh, commissioners um, approved the budget monies, uh, and I hope that that um, is, is enough to give appropriate compensation to our staff because it's been a tough three years and um, and you know it they know it uh, and, and across the nation uh, it's it's tough that way early in my career as a teacher we were given five uh, band-aids in a Ziploc bag 10 or 15 years later we were given five band-aids and five rubber gloves times change <coughs> We're, we're in a situation where I saw a doctor, and I think it was in Florida, has put together a um, survivor's packet that fits in a Ziploc bag, and it has two tourniquets, five pressure dressings, <clears throat> and five hemostats. Um, I almost hate to say it, but it's almost like we need to have those in schools also. Um, and I don't know whether the Federal uh, Safe Schools Project would have enough money to do that. 
um, but I think it's something worth uh, looking into and I would encourage the board and maybe Mr. Pender to look into that so if something were to happen in one of our schools maybe we can save a life not because we have a gun in school but because we have proper uh, field army almost military field dressings to, to help on that. I'd like to close with one thing. Most of you uh, weren't alive in the 70s, early 70s. Something to think about. The time between 1918 and 1970 is the same as 1970 to 2022. Just think of what went on between 1918, the end of the First World War, and 1970, and where we are right now. Thank you very much. Have a great summer. I'll see you in July. Thank right. you. Ariana Bennett. Oh, excuse me, Barrett. I apologize. Just state uh, your name for the record if you don't mind. Ariana Barrett. Thank you. Um, my speech will probably go for the whole three minutes. <laughs> Um, hi, I'm Ariana Barrett. I'm a 10th grader at Ken Island High School, and I'm here to talk about my and my community's rights, protections, and representation in school as a member of the LGBTQ plus community, but also as a member of your community. I don't speak on behalf of anyone but myself. I will be referencing experiences that I've faced and witnessed. According to the Gay, Lesbian, Straight Education Network, 90% of all LGBTQ students hear anti-LGBTQ comments in school. On average, an LGBT high school student will hear, an, will hear 26 slurs per day, a third of which come from teachers or staff. I've heard countless stories from people in my school who were being bullied because of their identity and they went to a teacher and were told, that's life, or I can't help you, or maybe you shouldn't display it then. That's what I've had said to me. The amount of hatred that is faced by members of the community that is not only received from other students but from teachers as well begs some questions and some conflicting ideals. Why should I have to be afraid about talking, talking of my identity or speaking my mind when people who their only difference is that they love the opposite sex and identify with their natural born gender are allowed to speak theirs without fear of scrutiny or hatred? This isn't about whether you agree with my community or not. This is about the rights of those who are struggling mentally and need to know that there are others out there who understand. This is about our right to seek help and be able to talk about our state of being without being shot down. This is about our right to simply exist without living in fear because of who we are, something that we can't control. This is our right to get, this is about our right to get an education and if we are bullied because of who we are, we can reach out to teachers for help without being, without being in fear of being rejected by our teachers as well. Board, admin, teachers, and even parents, don't let your personal views cloud you from seeing the wrong that's happening. Push past it to do what's right by the children who you've sworn to do goodbye and the kids who are depending on you daily. You say our schools are a safe place for the community. We'll show it because plenty of other people I know, not only from my school, but from other schools in the county are not seeing it. There are teachers, school staff, and students who make safe places for us, but there aren't enough. We need to shine a brighter light on this issue. One way we could do this is by educating leaders on how to support members of the community more and create more representation for the community to not make it such a taboo in our community. We can do all of this and more so that school is a safe, comfortable environment for those exploring their sexuality and gender identity. Thank you and happy Pride Month. address for the record, please. Um, do I need to state my address since I wrote it down? That's fine. Okay, uh, Kimberly Miller. I live in the town of Centerville. Thank you. Um, good evening. Uh, my name is Kimberly Miller. Uh, I'm, in, I'm from the mid shore, born and raised. And in 2007, I returned to the shore with my husband 
and our two children, one of whom was only a month old, uh, looking for a bit more space and a better school system than the one from which we were moving. I'm here tonight to speak in support of the educators of Queen Anne's County. I have a son in ninth grade and a son in 11th grade at Queen Anne's County High School. Over the course of the last 12 years, my children have attended the public school system here, and in each year, my children have received an extraordinary education from their teachers. In each grade, my children have been treated with kindness, treated with respect, given a quality education, and have always been well prepared for the month of testing in May and for the next school year. When the global pandemic sh shut schools down in March 2020, the teachers felt the brunt of the public's ire and criticism. Social media was filled with hateful words aimed at teachers as though it was their fault that schools were shut down and the local and statewide education system wasn't prepared to pivot when required. However, within two months, teachers were able to meet with the students online and create brand new lesson plans. Once a plan of action was established, the teachers dove in head first and made the best out of an awful situation. Who can anticipate a global pandemic, seriously. Um, in the time I've lived in this area as a parent, I've struggled with understanding why the local education system is expected to produce well-educated young people on a shoestring budget. With a group of conditioner, commissioners excuse me, who constantly fund at the minimal MOE, teachers are expected to pull a rabbit out of their hats each year. Continuing to handcuff them with ridiculous attendance requirements and lack of income will make recruiting quality teachers improbable and will make retaining the quality teachers we have impossible. I've been lucky to surround myself with some wonderful friends who also happen to be educators. Some of them have taught my children, some of them are my neighbors, some of them are fellow soccer moms, and some of them became friends through our son's friendships. I, as I've grown to know them more personally, I've learned that the giant hearts they show to our children in the classroom are also the way they live their lives. These educators are people who care a lot, and I find myself being a better person just by knowing them. They're a group of individuals who really do want each child to succeed and reach their fullest potential. Instead of handcuffing them even more, they should be rewarded. I trust the outcome of the negotiations will show the Queen Anne's County Board of Education is a group who truly does care about their teaching staff and their students. Actions are more important than words. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Sweeney. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Dawn Sweeney from Chester, Maryland. <clears throat> I'm back. Uh, not really because I wanted to do another speech and be in front of you, but because I felt the need that um, I have a lot of teacher friends. I work obviously in a school and people are afraid to come and talk because they're afraid of what's going to happen. And I think that's sad. And I think that, you know, I'm kind of going off cuff here, but you know, I, I, you all clap and you're all happy about all the spotlight stuff that comes up. And I think it's awesome. All those things are not possible without the teacher supporting it. All those after school programs, all those shuttles going up, all that fun stuff is, is possible because we stay after, we do all the prep work, we get it all together, we help everyone. I feel like a lot of times this board feels like it's a uh, 30 to 4 o'clock job and that's all teachers do and they do a lot more than that a lot of people in the school do a lot more than that not just the teachers so here's my my stink here uh, so for tonight I'm representing the teachers who are afraid um, to have their voices heard I'm here for the custodians who are right now in our schools getting them fresh and ready for tomorrow I'm here for the parents and assistants who are out working another job because what they make is not livable what are we doing um, are, are you even I just feel like you're not even listening to the people that come up here it's just a routine we come up here we do the things that we say the things and try to get you to understand what's going on but we're just they're just words that are going through and going right on out I mean leadership is 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 listening to the people and and, and empowering the people that are underneath of you. It, it's trying to make the whole group better. And a group is only better if everyone is working together and not separately. And I just feel like sometimes this board and, and the school, the um, you know, we're not working together. 
And th that's sad. It's sad that we're not listening. We're, we're not communicating with other people. We're, we're not able to listen and acknowledge what pe the, the things that people are struggling with. And I, I have a big concern for that because it is contagious, okay? Struggles and working too much and having paras, covered classes and doing things that they're not supposed to be doing. And you know, it, it's too much. And you all just think that it's fine. It's fine that we're going into uh, uh, classrooms and we have eight people out and we're, we're just all spread thin because we have to do it. Nobody else is going to do it. Okay, when we don't have any subs, like all these people who said, oh, we'll come and sub, we'll come and sub, don't worry about it, open the schools. There's nobody subbing. There's nobody subbing. It's a la-la land. There is not people subbing. We have like two regular subs. And we're here, like today, eight people are out because of graduation, because some for some reason we decided to do graduation at 10 o'clock in the middle of the day. When half of this county is made up of teachers who have kids that are in the school that are graduating. So we have people out, other people covering, things aren't the way they're supposed to be. I, I implore you to, I, I challenge you to come up and step up, go go cover a class okay, just, for the just, day. Just wrap it up, because I mean, we, we got only so many, we got a lot of speakers. I implore you to go cover a class a day. Not, not to stroll in, not to stroll in and take a browse and say, oh, isn't everything cute here? To actually go and cover a class, all of you. To cover a class, go cover a special ed class, go cover a UA class, okay? Try thank, it. Thank, 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 you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Breezlin Sweeney. Hello, I am Breezlin Sweeney. I'm in eighth grade at Stevensville Middle School. I spoke at the BOE meeting a couple weeks ago and I thought I would get my point across, but I guess I didn't. Teachers are getting treated the exact same and maybe even worse. Teachers are, um, wait, <laughs> we have not gained any staff since the last meeting. Teachers are still getting overworked. We are losing staff by the week. I am not proud. My school had a gun threat since the last meeting. Yes, my school got that sorted out, but still nothing has changed about me feeling safe. Yes, nothing big has happened to improve our schools, and that's pretty sad. We need to step up. Y'all seem to not listen to teachers, even if they have kids in the school system. Y'all listen to parents, though. I don't even think you listen to students, because you did nothing to make me feel safe at my own school. My teachers teach up to 80 students a day and still make time for every single one. They do so much for me, it breaks my heart how they get treated with such disrespect. I spoke for the teachers that couldn't. I spoke for the teachers that go home crying. I spoke for the students that don't feel safe at their own school. Last but not least, I spoke for me. I guess that it's not sad enough that kids don't feel safe in your school systems. You really need to do something. Step up QACPS. Faith East. Good evening. My name is Faith East. I live at 116 Gad Drive. I'm a little less nervous than last month. Um, I did not bring the props. I came as a union member to support our union and the maintenance of what it currently is, if not a betterment of it. I'm here as a community member and as a parent. As a community member, I came in last time and I gave you details about what is required of us in early childhood, in kindergarten, what is required of teachers during our planning, okay? Um, you really need to keep that in mind. You were just invited to come in and take over a class. When you come in to take over a class, you need to do the planning. You need to pull the manipulatives and put them in a little bag so that you can hand them to the 25 students in your class and they can do the math work because that's not planning. That's prep work, and it's not put into our planning time. Um, we do it then, but it's not. As a community member, I'm here to say thank you. 
a big thank you. Dr. Saline, I believe you're responsible. I could be wrong. One of the things that I said last time is that we've got a big discrepancy in this county when it comes to class size and number. We have kindergarten classes that have 12 students, and we have kindergarten classes that have 25. I know that the school that has 25 has been slated to get a new kindergarten teacher where we've got the large class of 25 and a new first grade teacher so that those children can have the time that they did not have this year. Thank you for that. Our children, as a community, our children need the best. And a teacher's time is the best thing that we have to give them. As a parent, I'm going to agree with the young lady who's just spoke about the safety in our schools. You have heard last time and this time about how kids feel unsafe. You have heard about how um, teachers have been injured on the job. Okay, we really need to be a community, come together and look at that. The last thing I want to say is, unfortunately, I guess it was an oversight, I have not heard about our current contract. I asked about whether the committee had been formed to look at um, planning time and how to increase it. I don't know if that's happened. I don't know if there has been representation. It's in this year's contract. So that needs to be done. You aren't teachers. You aren't in the, tr the trenches. You aren't doing the planning, creating the materials, putting the materials together. You need to know what we do, okay? Please talk to us. We will tell you. And the other person that was up here that said teachers are scared, we are. A lot of people will not get up here and talk to you because they're scared of getting put on a list. Just please keep that in mind. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you. you. Pet Lang. <laughs> oh, I'm bad. Kent Lang, 201 Tillman Neck Road, Centerville, Maryland, 21617. So I received in the mail since our last uh, Board of Ed meeting uh, from the Queen Anne's County Commissioners. It was a listing. It was very interesting as I went through it. Um, and I just want to kind of highlight a little bit of what I saw on there that makes me think maybe I've been going about this wrong sitting at this table is that there are 49 expenditures that the county commissioners put on here. Commissioners, executive, budget and finance, informative, information technology, information technology, human resources, economic and tourism development, community CTV, community fairs, area aging, agency on aging, local management board, detention center, planning and zoning, emergency services, administration for public works, animal services, engineering, general services, roads, solid waste, property management, parks, recreation, golf course, state's attorney's office, 4-H park, sheriff's office, orphan's court, circuit court, fire protection and rescue, Chesapeake College, QAC free library, board of elections, health department, soil conservation service, University of Maryland Extension Service, general insurance, local grants, transfer to capital, salary lapse, and contingency. The ones that I didn't list were all the ones that didn't have more of a percent increase than the Board of Ed at a whopping 2.4%. So my question, and I will gladly send you all my emails so you have the ability to respond, did we not ask for enough or did the county commissioners tell us this is all they're gonna give us? Because if that argument is they aren't gonna give it, then we need to be at a different meeting than with you guys. You're tired of seeing us, I'm sure. So if it's the wrong place, the wrong people, please let us know so we can go to the right people and have those conversations so that we can actually affect change to compensate our educators properly. Thank you. David Dulac. Good 
evening, David Dulac, uh, Chester, Maryland. I take a different tone. I'm here to thank you. Um, President Smith, board members, Dr. Salins, executive members, team members. Uh, I come tonight to express my appreciation for the 26 year career as an administrator in Queen Anne's County. My last year may have set some records though. I've been principal of Kent Island Elementary for the start of July, principal at Sellersville Elementary for July and August, and finally assistant principal at Manapeak Middle for the remainder of the school year. Um, that's not why I came here to discuss though, but rather to celebrate and thank the many individuals and groups who I've had the pleasure to work and serve with over these 26 years. So we're gonna go back a little bit in time. Mr. Smith, you remember. 1996, thank you Dr. Sadusky for hiring me. To the principals that I've worked under, I took many lessons from you all, and I am so very grateful. In chronological order, Marilyn Carey, it's a name from the past. Uh, Dr. David Jones, Denise Hirschberger, Lee Vitas, Conrad Judy, and most recently, Dr. Lois McCoy. All were principals that I served as their assistant. I had the privilege of meeting and interviewing with someone who I believe is simply one of the finest educators in Maryland and certainly in Queen Anne's County has ever seen, Dr. Carol Williamson. Dr. Wayne, Dr. Williamson hired my wife, Christine, and I back in 1990. Actually, she hired my wife. I came along with the, the package. And I was fortunate to follow her to Queen Anne's in 1996. She has been so impactful on, on mine and many other careers in leadership, and I can't thank her enough. I've had the pleasure of working with some of the best teachers our profession has to offer. Those schools I'll name later because it's an interesting list. Um, you're in the process now of hiring leaders. I know that today because I heard from a candidate. Uh, Mrs. Carey and Mrs. Hirschberger shared with me uh, the pride of seeing professionals move into leadership positions. And I also take great pride in seeing teachers who I've worked with make that important transition into leadership. That's always a thrill as a leader, that people who work for you and under you uh, move up through the ranks. I cannot thank enough the principals and supervisors who I've had the privilege of working with, and a special thanks to this group of, of uh, executive leadership members, Mr. K, Mrs. Langraff, and those deceased, Mr. Olak. And it's that time of year, those of us that have been around a long time remember Mr. Jennings visiting schools in his fedora and how people and the schools just scattered because nobody wanted to get that phone call to come down to the office and see Mr. Mr. Jennings. Um, their support of me as a young professional administrator will not be forgotten. And finally, and most importantly, to the thousands of students and their families that I've had the honor of working with, from Centerville Elementary School, to Southersville Elementary School, to Stevensville Middle School, to Mattapic Middle School, to Kent Island Elementary School, back to Centerville Elementary School, back to Mattapic Middle School, then back to Kent Island Elementary School, and then back up to Southersville Elementary, and finally my last station of duty, Mattapic Middle School. Thank you for all of the effort that the students have shared um, with me and, and just sharing those experiences. They're, they're never gonna be forgotten. In those thousands of students, I include my four children, um, Gregory, Andrew, Michael, and Rachel. All have graduated from Queen Anne's County High School. They've all graduated from college, university of their choice. Uh, Andrew and Michael just recently received their MBAs. Well, Andrew at MBA, Michael Masters in another area. A few more minutes, Sid. No, no, just a few more seconds. <laughs> right. keep it going. Um, and Rachel just received a Bachelor's of Science in Public Health and a Bachelor's of Arts in Spanish. All right. So just to let you know that. Uh, seriously, thank you to the teachers for the role that they've played in their success. I've said this on many occasions in Queen Anne's County, we have great students, we have supportive parents, and we have great teachers. That's a recipe for success. You can count on that. Thank you. And I forgot anybody, my sincere apologies, and thank you to the board for having me serve. Thank you. Thanks, Mr. Thank Miller. you. It's Julia George.
My name is Julia George, RN, NCSN, school nurse. I live at 5459 Wellington Drive, Trap, Maryland. I've been working for you now for 38 years. I've got another one or two left in me. Um, as you can see by my sign, I'm imploring you to do right by your educators, to do right for your support staff. During the pandemic and during the reopening, school nurses and teachers and support services all stepped up and did what we were asked. School nurses did three extra jobs on top of being a regular full-time school nurse. We were COVID testers, we were contact tracers, and we were the COVID communicable disease nurses for the entire school system. We stepped up. We now ask that you too step up. Give us all a decent COLA. Give us all our steps. You have a pending problem coming. School nurses will be, by my count, retiring four to five of us in the next two years. You have 16 school nurses now. To encourage substitute school nurses to uh, work for you, you pay them $35 an hour. A regular school nurse with an associate's degree makes $27.39 an hour. She has far more responsibility than your substitute nurse. Until she reaches step six in the pay scale, she won't make $35 an hour. A school nurse with a bachelor's degree and, a, and, a, and an RN at step one makes $31.86 an hour. She won't reach the sub rate of pay until step three. Then she will make just over 35. If you compare our salaries, the professional salaries of the school nurses that you're asking to work for you, to what, what professionals are being paid elsewhere in Queen Anne's County, we are being paid, if you were a school nurse one with an associate's degree and you're an RN, you make 8,000 to 10,000 less when you enter the system. You require that you have school nurses with at least two years of experience, not a school nurse straight out of school nursing. They're being paid 39,697 a year. It's not competitive, not even for a 10 month job. You're gonna lose. You're gonna fall behind. How are you gonna hire those people? If you're a school nurse with a bachelor's degree, you will be hired at 46,000. If I were a brand new teacher with a bachelor's degree, and I have no experience at all, you know what the pay rate is. You would pay me between 48,000 to 50,000, depending on what my, my, what my certificate standing was, whether I was SBC or ABC. You're currently advertising a social work worker who will make more than your school nurses who have been working for you for three and four years. You have a problem coming, it needs to be fixed. Please, please, please know that 52% of your support employees are at the end of their pay scale. They're on a fixed, I understand. They are on a fixed scale. They are on fixed payment, just like Social Security. Social Security payments, COLA is going up 5.9%. Thank you, Talbot County is going to take 3.75%. Could you send us We need a COLA that is not a pun. We need a good COLA, please. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Karen Fields. Good evening, I'm Karen Fields. I'm president of the Queen Anne County Education Association and I'm an ELA teacher at Centerville Middle School. It's very troubling to QACEA members that we have reached the point of impasse. In the decade that I have been involved in the collective bargaining process under three superintendents, the board and QACEA has always been able to reach a consensus. Unfortunately, a third party will try to broker an agreement. We've been asking for months for the board to step up for their students and their staff. As the vacancy announcements pile up, QAC employees are making the decision to step out. You need to stop the exodus. We approach this next phase in good faith and in the hope that an agreement can be reached that honors our hard work. 
over the next few months, we will need to decide if our future actually begins here. Thank you. Thank you. That's all the names on the list. Does anyone else want to speak? You skipped one. He's on the list. Okay, come on up. I'm sorry, Brendan Lamb. I apologize. Thank you so much. Good evening, members of the board and superintendent. Give, you, give your name, Quinn. just address, or jo Brendan just, Lamb. Just your name. Thank you. Good evening, members of the board and superintendent of Queen Anne's County Public Schools. I am here today as a student of Queen Anne's County High School. I am not just representing myself and fellow classmates, but the teachers and other staff members of this school system. One of those teachers is my mother. I've so I've witnessed firsthand the time and dedication teachers put in beyond the workday. I am speaking on behalf of some of the teachers I thank the most for making me who I am. They are feeling disrespected and undervalued for all the hard work they put in. Now let's pause and review that for a second. The staff that is relied on teach kids as low as pre-kindergarten age all the way through high school and into adulthood are feeling disrespected and undervalued. Not just a few, but many feel this way. Students like myself need these wonderful teachers to educate and guide us through the hardest time of our lives. But these teachers are not being respected. This is a problem that needs to be addressed or the future of this school system as well as the future generations of students are at great risk. Next, many teachers are feeling violated through the fact that in their contract they are promised a set amount of time for planning period. For example, at Queen Anne's County High School, I have first-handedly witnessed many teachers giving up their planning period to cover other teachers. Many times they will bring their laptops and other materials for planning and grading to try and complete the many tasks they have during their planning period. Let me inform these, this board and anyone listening that students are losing out on valuable instruction by not having a substitute. Teachers struggle to cover a class while doing the important work they must complete in order pre to prepare for their own class. It saddens me to watch as teachers are overly stressed and pushed to the point where they cannot put in a much needed effort to educate their students. The job teachers have is not simple and is not easy, yet they are the ones being treated unfairly. May I ask, why are we here tonight? Why aren't you showing teachers the respect and appreciation they deserve? They should be appreciated as important lifesavers for many children and teenagers all over this county. The teachers are not just educating students, they are literally shaping the future generations of this county by giving us guidance and showing us what lies ahead as adults. Teachers are the future just as much as the students are guiding. Lastly, on top of the fact that many teachers are extremely overworked in school, many of them go home to a second job to make ends meet. In addition, many of them grade and plan on their own time, including my mom. They're not paid for this, and many teachers stay up late working some nights just to get up early the next morning and do it all over again. Teachers work just as hard, if not harder, than many other professionals. So why, may I ask, are they being treated this way? On behalf of the staff working in this county, fellow classmates, and myself, we want to see a change. Thank you for your time, and let's solve this problem with immediate attention. Step up. That's the end of our uh, public comment right now. And like I said earlier, we will hear from everybody. Uh, we have a big agenda, but at 8 o'clock, I will take a break and open open form again for anybody that uh, either didn't get to speak or has more to say. Is Thank there, you. Are there other people on the list? No, honey, that's no. it. Okay. That's it. But if anybody wants, I mean, we're going to be here, but I don't want you to have to wait till 9 o'clock or 10 o'clock tonight if it's too late for you. Next up will be uh, Ms. Hudock, you're up next. Jumping to proceed. Um, I can hear everything you say.
Good evening again. Um, I bring before you the personal electronic device policy 603. It is for, it's um, up for the first read. A group, several groups actually met and looked at the policy, looked at the regulations and um, aligned the policy with actual implementation. So this is for the cell phones. So it's just updating it. Did we change the name of this? Mm -hmm. Didn't it used to be called is technology? No. No, there is another one that you're referring to. Oh, okay. Acceptable use, mm -hmm. of, Acceptable use yeah. of technology. That's a different yes, policy. that's okay. a different one. This is still the same name, just making it more reflective of current practices. Thank you. I said two questions. One is it says they're an integral part of our everyday world and through instant communication may add to the well being of students. What instances were we thinking that that instant communication added to the well being of the students? Um, teachers use them um, for students to interact. It, it's really the middle school and the high school are leaving it at um, more autonomy for the for the classroom teacher because they do, and I can't think of the app off the top of my head, but there's an interactive where they can use their phones as a response so they get an immediate assessment of what students know if they do an activity. Uh, Kahoot. Yeah, that's one of that's them. One. Kahoot that's is one, example. and then there's other ones as well. Um, and the students can respond using their phones. Okay. So it's at their discretion. So as long as it's used in an instructional interactive way. So as a tool, an instructional tool. Okay, thanks. Can the, Chromes, can the Chromebooks be used for that too? Um, they can, yeah, they can. I guess my only concern, if everybody has a Chromebook, you're limited to what you can do. You have a phone, you, I mean, not that somebody would be doing something inappropriate, but they could be. No, they can use their laptops, but um, being boots on the ground, not everybody has their laptops with them every day. They may not have them charged, so it's an alternative. Not that a teacher is going to use them. It's really just the high schools and the middle school were looking to have, they wanted the teachers, the administrators wanted the teachers to have the autonomy to use them. But they needed to be used in an instructional manner. And then I was looking at, it says, therefore, limited use of student and employee electronic devices will be permitted, but must strictly follow the prescribed guidelines. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? Where, like, where are the guidelines? They're not on the policy. That is, so. no, that would be in the, the um, policy that Tammy, uh, that Ms. Harper was referring to. Acceptable the, use yeah, policy. Yeah, acceptable use policy. So they are, this is, it's separate, but then that one governs what is acceptable. We have two policies? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And the other one comes out of the um, technology department. This one's just really focusing on the use of um, the tool as an instructional support. See, and I guess I wasn't, I wasn't getting that from it because it says instant communication may add to the well-being of students, and it doesn't seem like that's... Instant communication, like she said, we use them educationally speaking to engage with quick responses. So mm -hmm. we might be on Teams, the, a question pops up and ask it, and the team quickly um, weighs in on the question, and, and it's a competition. We, we've used so them it's, actually it's, in professional development we have, as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So it's just it's just a real quick, immediate response. Oh, okay. I can understand that. Just the, yeah. the, the verbiage of well being doesn't seem educational if that makes sense it doesn't and so why is there some reason we couldn't modify the other one to make this just inclusive and in this other is policy? more instructional the other one is more for technology yeah. uses of being able to what you can use your phone for as it relates to um, if you you can't use it to capture inappropriate pictures and you can't use you know those types of things it's it's more on the technical aspect technology aspect of using our internet and and what you can and can't do yeah, and, right and that language wasn't changed, that the language you're referring to it is And this was only insane. updated to reflect what we currently do. Yeah. So we had a policy that was outdated and didn't really express what our current procedures and policy is. You, you know, I, I look at technology as a lot of good things mm -hmm. sometimes, not necessarily some I things. I agree with you, Mr. Smith. Um, Every teacher, when they're teaching a class, has a right to sit there and say, we're gonna shut this stuff down because we're not, we don't need it right now. I mean, because yep. you know, I, it appalls me when I go to a restaurant and see half the people sitting at a table on a phone. I 
Okay. But I would think that when you're in class, if the teacher's using using it and it's a help, that's one thing. <coughs> but at some point times, they just need to be putting their book bags or somewhere else and just shut down. Agree. Okay. Any other board members have any? No. And it will come back for a second in um, July and then look for approval in August. <clears throat> And it also says it'll be reviewed annually, and I think that's very good because yes. you know, it things had change. Been, the it other had policy been is been also a long time. Mm -hmm. I mean, things like that. I think what Helen is saying is, if you look at the purpose, the purpose of this policy is to establish guidelines for the student and employees of Queen Anne's County for the use of electronic devices on the grounds, et cetera. And then there's no guidelines. The guidelines are part of the It's the regulations. regular guidelines. Uh, so okay. it's every the student, when they start, they get a policy that them and their parents read and agree to. Yeah, we're not going to use these for inappropriate inappropriate things. activities or you know being on the phone while you're in class there are those are the guidelines right that, but it's the, the purpose handbook. of this policy is to establish guidelines so this policy is not establishing any I mean it just doesn't I guess this policy doesn't really make any it's recognized it's in the guidelines that are which will be in the regulations so 603 point whatever whatever yes. I guess mm. okay yeah and we just need to change that line. Maybe instead of saying establishing, maybe saying reference. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it sounds like it's way. more the purpose is to allow teachers to use kids' phones for educational purposes. It seems like that's more the purpose than to um, establish guide. I don't. I guess I'm. I'm just not understanding the, the purpose of this policy because there's no guidelines, which is it says it's establishing them. Um, I'm just not following. Well, how about clarifying? Instead of saying establishing, clarifying the guidelines for the use of personal devices in schools. Or just to incorporate the, the actual guidelines or the, refer, the, refer the regulation that you mentioned. You're going to have to make a reference to the actual um, They're done regulation. there, but I thought what came to the board was policy only. Right. I'm yeah. 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 I'm just saying that this can reference the regulation. And yeah, the number, at least the regulation number, and sure. Yeah. I actually yeah. thought I, I printed it out a few times, but I thought I missed a couple pages because it was so. Well, policies usually are very, very broad. Mm -hmm. Your regulation is where you get down yeah, to the nitty-gritty And, and I did detail. not adjust what was in right. the policy, only what the practice has been were. adjusted. Right. Yeah, and there's only a couple of changes on it from the existing yeah. policy, but just... Well, maybe I think if we, if we, if we sent the yeah. other thing that it relates to, so the board can look at that too and go back to the other policy. Well, the regulation falls under the superintendent, so I know, but we it's not necessary what it, it's to send that with the policy. Well, I, I suggest it. you take it back to the team and, and reevaluate the purpose and come back next month. Or that'd be great. Dr. Yeah. Sprinkle come back next month to articulate. No, you should make her come back. changes. Can look at the <laughs> can look at the purpose. Yeah. And, yeah. 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 Just reference the, like yeah. I said, reference the regulations. Regulation. So if you look at this policy, we approve the policy, and the policy establishes the regulations and the guidelines. And under 602.1, whatever it is, just so you can find it. I mean, yep. otherwise, it's just a. The suggestion I can is also author really authorize the establishment yeah. of guidelines. The purpose of this policy is to authorize the establishment of guidelines. Okay. Okay. That's fine. If I that's what that. the purpose is, then that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Semantics. Okay. Semantics. Semantics. I got it. Got it. Thank All right. you. you. Can you Word please matter. forward that to me? To I will. Dr. Right. Right. Thank, Thank you. you. I appreciate your time. Mm -hmm. That sounds. <laughs> I'm looking at Darren. Our next will be expenditures. Okay. Ms. Towers. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. Tonight we bring before you the May expenditures in detail and in summary for your review. And any questions? They look pretty good to me, but we got another month ago. <laughs> to me, I see nothing out of the ordinary that's. Mm -mm. I have to. I from what I've seen in the past and what I see now, I don't see any any red parents to me. Any other board members have any questions? Mm -mm. I will when we start getting into the action items. 
the, the next <laughs> item we bring before you is SR2 okay. and SR3 breakdown for your review. And any questions? So this has to be spent by September? Um, SR2 is 93023, and then SR3 is 93024. Thank you. What is the long term? Will this hopefully come back again? I mean, this has been a godsend for COVID's not mm -hmm. been. But this, these ESSER funds have been a godsend for us to do some things that we are, are you know really couldn't do now we've had to do some extra things during COVID, so it's it's extra things on our plate but it's been a very helpful and i know we've got the, the next wave of esser monies really is coming through the leeds grant right leeds now grant, i don't we're... foresee that we would get additional funds following that mm -hmm. um because really that's when the blueprint funding starts to really come in and so um, transition so yeah so we're kind of going from esser one to esser two to esser three to leeds grant to blueprint um that's the way that we've been understanding oh, right. how it's right. That's what we've been told is going to be how it's going to roll. So summer school this year is still with ESSER two. Is that correct? It is out of ESSER three. ESSER three. Yes. Okay. Have any other questions by the board? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Dr. Kibler. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team, uh, Dr. Kibler, Director of Accountability and Implementation. I bring before you tonight a first read on a new policy um, to establish citizen advisory committees. Members have any I mean, questions or comments? Well, I have a couple questions. Just um, I think the citizens' advisory committees—it's just a great idea, and we're certainly not limited with you know how many we can have. Um, I guess I'm thinking just because this was something that was. I had wanted to, that I talked about establishing many months ago, and then I know we've, we've taken this up, is on the policy here, I guess I'm thinking uh, certainly of Dr. Salins and executive team to have citizens commissions, committees that uh, advise you guys would be a great idea too, but for the one that advises the board, that I would like the, that committee to report to the board um, rather than report to this says committees will report to the board when requested but i think that that would just be the standard is that that committee for if it was going to be to help um us with our with things that we task them with that they would just report to us rather than when requested and have the board of education look and be over the lia would be the liaison for the committee that was for us. Doesn't mean we can't have other committees, certainly, that would, um, you know, advise on all number of things, but the committee that I had in mind for this uh, committee for us, the citizens uh, committee would be reporting to us on questions and advising us on things like the, uh, I'm drawing a blank on what we even have any purview over, but just any things that we had questions about, whether it be curriculum or whether it be Comar or anything like that, somebody that would advise us. So, so, so what I, I, I researched what a lot of other districts were doing as well, and there was kind of two models. One model is writing one policy that just creates a citizens advisory committee, council, whatever you want to name it, just names that committee. Another model, and that's what um, Dr. Salins and I liked and are proposing here, is that we just establish that we're going to have citizens advisory committees. Let's not put a number necessarily on it. And then in a company regulation that that's the next agenda item as well, that will make the citizens advisory council and then directly report to the board. And we can change that language to make it more formal when it's reported. Um, but, and, and we can go the, the alternate route too, but this, this seemed to not limit us to just the one committee and allowed us to, if we decided we have the Citizens Advisory Council and 
we want them to look at school calendar and they just can't fit in with when they're doing policy review where you already have a policy there where you can go ahead and set up a separate committee just to look at calendar if you would like to mm -hmm. rather than just having the one committee there you, you now have a broad policy whenever you need to form these groups whether ongoing or ad hoc it's there I think it's a great idea and, and I and certainly we can I understand what you're saying then it says report to the board when that's requested so if we had a committee that was set up by the board to advise the board then obviously that committee would then just report to the board but um, in the meetings uh, I don't know that we necessarily for the citizens advisory committee that would be helping us as a board members that we need a, a superintendent designated. It seems like it would be a board designated person to deal with that one particular that, board now. That's uh, education article 4-102 says that any committee um, has to have the superintendent or designee and I, and this is me do, mm -hmm, and I'm happy right. to be corrected but that was my interpretation of that that superintendent or designee has to be a, a, a member and attend all, all meetings of any committees uh, yeah just checked in mr. Burns is it required for all of the committees Uh, Darren Byrne, board uh, attorney for the record. Um, Mr. Kibler was referring to 4-102 uh, of the education article, uh, which lists, among other things, uh, uh, the county superintendent's uh, duties in various counties, including what would apply here. And under subsection B, it says, attendance at meetings, unless the tenure or salary of the administration of the office of the county superintendent is under consideration, because that would be like a conflict, the county superintendent or the county superintendent's designee shall attend all meetings of the county board and its committees. My interpretation of that is that superintendent or does needs required to be at any committee meeting that would certainly include a CAC type committee established under 4-112 uh, and it makes sense because keep in mind that any such committee is, is in essence a public body as a subcommittee of this board and your superintendent as a CEO and secretary of the board would or through herself or a designee would want to be there for that committee while they're acting um, uh, and that would certainly be how I would read 4102. Thanks. Mm -hmm. And my little concern would be that if we didn't have a des superintendent or a designee there, there's a lot of resources that are going to have to be pulled when certain things come up to get information. And that is through the superintendent or a staff member. Um, so it comes back in front of the board. We'd have participation in the board. We'd do what we want as far as asking questions and putting different citizens on the board to get a well rounded. I think it's the best interest of everybody. But. Um, I don't know how we would do it if we said just the board was report to the board and didn't have the staff involved because they're the ones that are gonna have to do it. Not I didn't think that it would not be involved. I guess I was thinking to facilitate the meetings. Um, what I had had envisioned was just like any other citizen advisory committee that the county has is you have a chairman and a vice chair of the board of that committee that but certainly Dr. Salins could have somebody attend with it and be a part of it, but not necessarily do the facilitation of, of the said meetings on that particular committee, not on any others, but. I guess facilitate, somebody's got to sit there and set parameters of what's going to happen and, and keep things. I think any board, any not board, any citizen person on that board could sit there and bring up what they want, ask whatever they want questions. And I, would, I think even a board member, which personally I'm a little reluctant to have board members on it because I think it should be independent and it comes back to us at a later time because when uh, the commit county commissioners do things, if they're sitting on a board and then it comes back in front of them, I think they're not a conflict, but you, know, you need to get the whole scope of it. Yeah. Well, they're not sitting on the board, they're just the liaisons, and that's why it had the proposal for that I had brought, which, and, and again, I just, I love that we were, that we're not limited. I was, I was strictly interested in a citizens advisory committee that advised the board. And so they would have their chair and their chairperson with a board of education member or two being the liaison of the, of the committee, just to research or to answer questions that we might have or task them with, just for that one committee, not for any others. I mean, it's certainly, I think it's a great idea to um, have Dr. Salins and her executive team also have 
I think we it's already great have. So um, I don't know if you right exactly. So we already do have one. I don't know that it that I need to create one unless the board directs me to do so for a specific topic. Um, I feel like we kind of did one for our strategic planning. To be honest with you, it just we didn't call it that, and we certainly didn't have the policy right now. Um, I think it's necessary for us to put the policy in place. Mm -hmm. um, there is a law there, and I think that you know while we do have CCAC, we really haven't been. I don't believe meeting the intentions of the law completely. It is an advisory board to the Board of Education, and I really feel that staff members being a part of that and facilitating that is very important to be able to get those topics and present them back to the board. Um, I've, I've not seen one where board members even attend or are on it, but I think it was a great idea, and so that's why we incorporated it in there. Um, you know, if, if you don't like the verbiage of when requested, we can do it monthly. Um, we can do it at board meetings or at work sessions or um, as directed by the board. I mean, I you know, I don't have a problem of how it's reported out. We'd be happy to report to the board um, any opportunity that we can um, and, you know, could share minutes and things like that. I mean, I'm, it's supposed to be a partnership and it's supposed to be something that's um, of benefit to the, to the board. That's the intention from the superintendent tenant is to benefit the board and so um, you know I, I think that we um, would be more than happy to, to to change out how often or what frequency the board would like to have that information delivered to them well, I mean I, personally I would think there should be a minimum of so many meetings a year it's in the or, regulation or as required yeah it's and in, it's, it's it's in, in the, the regulation, regulation. Okay, yeah. because if we have certain things we did six meetings. It might get hotter, but yeah. you, and you might have to have a second meeting. Yeah, that's we'll put that in there too. But that's mm -hmm. where it's going to require staff to get that information together with input from the community, which I think is great, and I think it, it gives a, a better insight to some community members to know what's really going on, and it, it all comes back to the board anyway for, for that. And we put who would present it to the board? I I'm mean, sorry. let's be honest. A team member, an executive exactly. team member, should report to the board from the committee. You don't want the whole committee here. And, and, and we don't need a whole committee, but oh, and maybe and a committee representative if they sure. feel that they would like to have it. You know, so it's just you know that another committee member could be there. But Mr. Smith, I'll add that there are counties, some county schools. This is where a CAC report is sort of a semi-regular report. It may not be every right. meeting, but it may be the month in between the two meetings in the sixth meeting model. And I would also add that it's important to keep in mind beyond the involvement and staff of helping the committee say answer questions or research don't forget the other piece is as I mentioned earlier because of the Open Meetings Act Public Information Act and other legal requirements that are going to pertain to the committee you will need the superintendent and staff just to ensure that things happen between meetings the right way the notice goes out properly the capture of the minutes might be taken by the chair but then they've got to be recorded somewhere and kept properly and posted for the for the public so right away you can see you've got to have the interface with the staff oh, yeah. which ultimately they're directly directed by Dr. Salen. So I think it's a combination, uh, and I think what you all are talking about would meet the intent of the law. So in your reg, you do have one board member appointed by the president. Yeah, and um, Dick, did you say you think that's a conflict of interest, or? The only thing I have found, and this is putting my commissioner's hat on, we used to have a commissioner sit on the planning commission. I was there and I didn't like that idea because I'm sitting on a planning commission of one of seven or Gene Ransom or whoever was there and you had discussion now what you do is you have discussion a smart one will exempt themselves and says well I'm commissioner because I'm gonna get a second crack at this I'm exempt they've already put a lot of input in, and done something a certain way that I had concerns with let the group do it bring it to the board and the f five members of the board then vote on it what's way I it, it, it's, it cannot be a conflict. Um, so it's like an implicit, because you're there, you're well, encouraging it, whatever. Well, let's face it, it, it I don't have a problem uh, be a board member being there, but I think when a board member's there, if we have citizens there, you know, it's different because you're coming back on it. And if you sit there and at a board, at one of these CAC meetings and start saying this, 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 the way you want to see it, well, I don't know if that's going to put too much weight on. It's the same as if Dr. Salen said, I want this, this, and this. Well, that's not what they're there for. It's to get a, com a, a community group to get a consensus of what they want to bring in front of this board. And that would be my concern. So you may want to think about changing that. Well, I, the only reason, honestly, I've yeah, never seen did. it. I've never seen it done like that. I only did that because um, Ms. Bennett had 
know, um, great desires to have a board member on there. I think I, I take your point very well said. That's why I don't attend a lot of meetings because there's not, I don't want to use the word intimidation factor, but people aren't as willing to probably express what their true feelings are for fear that they might think I think differently of them. And I feel the same way. And when you bring citizens together, you have PTA presidents, you have, you know, um, representatives within the community and to have a board member there, you have, you know, a sense of presence and you may sway the way some people think about things. I'm more yeah, than happy have to do it either way on the on what the board would recommend. Yeah, so we did have a policy committee, right, where the board members were part of that committee. I think Ms. Harper served yeah. on it mm -hmm. for some time. I did for and, a and you did? And you did for a yeah, and it's a lot, I think the CAC is a lot different than a planning commission mm -hmm. subcommittee where you're talking about expansion, which means contracts yeah. and money and and I don't, I'm a trip. If that's I have no be problem. The same just, here, yeah. well, just I mean, just to differentiate sure. here. Sure. Well, my so. thing, I guess, was thinking because I sat on the Economic Development Commission for six years to the commissioners, and that was an advisory board. Um, there were no decisions made by the EDC; it was strictly advisory. And so we always had the commissioner liaison at our meetings. I never felt pressure from the from the commissioner because we're just a, he's asking us. The commissioners are asking us for our advice because that's who we're. That's who created us to talk to them and give them advice. I mean, that's we just had that time to research. We researched text, amend, text amendments. We re, we talked to developers when they're the programs. We had the presentations, and then we would give our opinion um, and write it. But the commissioner uh, sat on that with you? He's the lia All the commissioners are liaisons to every single citizen's commission that we have in the county. Um, <coughs> They don't sit on the planning and zoning. Um, and you're right. I mean, you've got a lot they of did people it one now. Time. Right, they did, but they don't do that now. They're just the liaison. But if the for and it, and the thing is, just for the CAC, I thought that was to advise the board. We are asking the board for their opinion. So I guess I was thinking we're asking for their input so that's what I want I don't want them to be influenced by me the whole reason why we would be asking them is to get the input of the citizens that were on the, that were on the board and then they are just advising and we, whether we accept or not or whether we vote or not is a whole nother thing but advisory is I guess I'm thinking I don't feel any pressure that they would feel the pressure from us because we're asking them their opinions about stuff so so in, in past years I've been uh, what CSAC came before the board mm -hmm. and did their presentations on their committees and reports and a, a lot of good came out of it and mm -hmm. they were reporting to the board and, and at that time dr. Williamson and um, it, it was it was very helpful so yeah, I, that's I, what, the that's, what that's what here. the attention is here mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. well let, let me ask a question we have on this this is going to the second one which is a regulation one executive team member designated by the superintendent, one board member appointed by the president, they'd be both those would be non-voting. Yeah, because there's really not. I mean, just put it in there that it'd be yeah, non-voting. Well, there. definitely, because there's nothing to vote. Because again, well, it's but there have to be a consensus. I mean, yeah. if, if something's going on and yeah, and, yes. and Doc Salant or Doctor Kibler's chairing it, they're going to say, okay, we need we need to bring this up. This is a recommendation. Are we all for it? Well, Doctor Kibler. And Mark would not be voting members. They would right. just sit there and let the. I mean, that might be a, a way to uh, to do it where you'd still have people on there, have the expertise on there, get feedback to the board. But the board is going to get it back to vote on it later. And Dr. Salins, if it follows her preview, is going to make the decision on something that's you know in her preview of what she's going to be doing. And they would report to the board. It, I mean, there's only yeah. six meetings a year, yeah. so every uh, you know, maybe like three times a year they could come. I mean, or more if it's necessary. I mean, it, that's what it's about, being advisors. We talked about every meeting uh, afterwards because we would have the minutes and we would just share some highlights and, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. That's well, and, we and that could about. be both the staff member or you and the board member could sit there and do the, go over the minutes and could sit there and do and or committee wanted somebody else there. I mean, I'd have, that would be certainly there. I mean, it's, it, you know, it's a working process yeah. to a point. And where would we see the, the, the tasking coming from? Like, who would be able to suggest, like, this is something I'd like you to... The board. board members. The board members. Or if anybody, I mean... <laughs> 
Okay. There's all kinds of issues that come up with our systems, and it might we, that might be a good place to throw it to the Citizens Advisory Council to get a to feel rather than putting out a, a survey all the time. Well, one thing that we put in here that that might go before the committee are pieces of the blueprint. So we might have to make it a, a decision of how we're going to implement a, a certain piece of that legislation. So with your permission, we'd say, hey, we'd, we'd like to go to the CAC and just run this by which which way would they, they lean or what are their thoughts if we go this direction or, or that. So I, I can envision executive team members coming to you and saying we want to bring these topics up to the CAC to get their opinion and and then share that out with you. And then the other the other thing we're thinking is as policies come up, there will be times where you'll say, well, hey, what, what was the CAC's view on this, whether that be a board member that sits and non-voting. And, and that's the only part that gets to be a little bit of conflict because you have to vote, this board has to vote on the school calendar. They have to vote on every policy that comes through. So there could potentially be that conflict is, I think, what Dick was trying to say. Well, it was, but, you know, the board member was, and I think, anybody, most board members would not vote on something because it would be, you know, why why do that until I hear the whole thing and hear what's going on? But um, I just want to make it as independent as possible. Mm -hmm. and I think it's the same thing, too, is when we do our book reviews, this would be a perfect place to send some of these books mm -hmm. to, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, yep, and you get it on there. Uh, you don't want a board member voting on that because it's going to come in front of the board for uh, a, a, a first, second, and third read or whatever. But, I, I, you know, I don't know what everybody's thoughts, but that might be a way to... I, I would say I, I was not necessarily envisioning that the CAC would take a position as we talk about voting. It was more of what, what was, was the discussion? What, what were the, the discussion? You know, thoughts. when we look at minutes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. exactly. And here were the pros and the cons. Right, exactly. Yeah, it probably would not come to yeah. many votes. Right, but. right. That's what I envisioned as well. Just in a, somebody, a group that would. Once they were tasked with something, would just give their opinions. Would right. have it would be an advice, you know, an advisory board, and it would not be binding on um, Dr. Salins or the executive team or the board if we did not vote on something. Yeah, but to get feedback, and I guess I and when I had created one is in, in the. I had thought that it would be great to do positions outside of the school district um, rather than teachers and stuff picking them that we would um, have them come from the community um, solicit from like two from each district one that was the they would be from the community Pardon? they would be from the community because but it's the names from the teeth that would be put out by the teachers. right because they're the people who know our parents who are involved in the community that you know there's a, that's really your your best resource is going to your teachers and saying you know which one of your parents or PTA or, or somebody who that's why I said most of the time it's usually somebody who's involved in the PTA or the Boosters Club or something like that that has a, a, a little different lens, not just a parent lens, but usually has multiple lenses. And in the regulation, the I'm sorry, in the regulation we also did put five others, one nominated from each of the board members as well. And if you would choose that you want somebody sort of in the district but outside of the school system, that would be your prerogative. This is information. Well, we heard, you know. Okay. Yeah, it'll come back to you two more times. Okay. Because everybody needs Thank to adjust it, and if we need to make any tweets, we can do that at the next. Sure. And so we kind of covered both. We kind of covered both at once. We're good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you, Dr. Pippa. Okay, we're scheduled for a break, but we're not going to do it. We're going to keep running, and at 8 o'clock, I will then call for public comment, which at the present time, there doesn't look like there's any, but we will do that because I did say I would do it back earlier. Dr. Knoll. No, it's an action the current item. action item, item, sir. I think you've all had an opportunity. We've all had an opportunity to mm -hmm. review the uh, human resources report. Mm -hmm. I have a motion to approve. So moved. Second. second. Oh, sorry, Mark. I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Ayes have it. Just keep that going. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing, Ms. Kenna? I am I'm doing very well. Just sit there. How are you doing? doing? Say the same have thing. Have you recovered? <laughs> Do we look like it? <laughs> <laughs> so good evening, President yeah. Smith and Superintendent Salins and members of the board and exec team. My name is Tracy Kenna. I'm the Supervisor of Accountability. I am here with three different renewal contracts uh, for your action. The first one we're going to discuss is College Board. This is the PSAT 
that we give to all sophomores um, and the school day SAT, which we've been giving to all juniors. Well, I would say over COVID years, as many juniors as we could get. Um, but we'd like to get back in the swing of giving these two tests free of charge to all of our 10th and uh, 11th graders. And this is, we've been doing this pre-COVID, we did this. Yes, Ever. we've been doing PSAT for a while. We use the PSAT scores for an AP potential program in College Board, um, which then allows us to schedule certain kids. It's actually looking for students that may be underrepresented in advanced placement courses. So getting PSAT scores in sophomore year allows us to then schedule them into the more rigorous courses further in high school. So we've been using that one for a while. The school day SAT we've been doing uh, just since 2018. Oh, may I make a motion, Mr. Smith? Mm -hmm. Make a motion to renew the ongoing contract with College Board to provide uh, PSAT and SAT testing. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $31,719. Budget source unrestricted current expense fund. Second. I have a first and a second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Ms. Kennedy, before you go on, I remember all those graduations with you standing there handing the folders out to your <laughs> academic dean all those years. You didn't miss it today because it was blazing hot. I would have just been melting in that gown. <laughs> I'm, I'm so glad you guys toughed it out and wore it. Yeah, but <laughs> I was happy to not be in the gown today. But but they did they did do a lovely job today. It was yes. very nicely it was nice done. Thing. Nobody actually burst into flames. Okay, the next up is Schoology. Schoology is a power school product. Uh, it is our learning management system. We are using it because when we went into uh, the 2021 school year, we needed a learning management system so that we could teach virtually and have students engage with education while not being in the building. Um, so at this point, we are still required to have some kind of a learning management system for another couple of years. That way we're in abiding by the safe returns plan. The idea is that at any point in time, it be it a snow day, I mean, it doesn't have to be a, a major pandemic event, but we could have kids continue to learn. So a perfect example is today at Queen Anne's County High School, the underclassmen were working on Schoology when the seniors were graduating. So they really didn't miss a, miss a beat. And then the same will be tomorrow for Kent Island. So Schoology, and I do mention it's a power school product because today is kind of a power school day between uh, Mr. Combs and myself. All of these products were actually purchased separately over the years, some as long ago as Dr. Williamson. I feel like we've mentioned her a bunch tonight. Um, but over the years, power school has just kind of purchased everything. Um, so we are working to start to bring these all together that we will come to you and talk to you about power school instead of Schoology or my next one, which is uh, the performance matters. Do we know if we can kind of bulk discount for using all these products together? That, that's what I'm working towards. I'm going to look over to Jane. Yes, that's what we, we are trying. Mm. Because at this point, we get the other counties on the shore too together. Gotcha. That makes sense. Because they've become a huge, huge company oh, yeah. at this point. Yeah, well, Performance Matters has been out for... Um, oh, we were trying to figure that out today. I believe it's... It's been 20 years. I was going to say, it's yeah. about 19, I, we, 20 years. I remember with that first year that we got it. Yeah. Yeah. So It's been 20 years. Yeah. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to renew the ongoing contract with Paris School for the use of Schoology? Fiscal impact dollar amount of $45,877.72. Budget source ESSER 2 funds. Okay. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 The ayes have it. And just to give Mr. Kevin Michaels a moment in the spotlight, uh, he did pull some numbers for me this morning, and over 16,000 submissions were submitted last week alone by our students into Schoology. So I think we're using it. I think that's good. All right, next is Performance Matters, another power school product now. Uh, but as we said, Performance Matters has been around with us for just about 19 years, maybe 20. Uh, we used Performance Matters as our data warehouse and for all of our local assessments. We have transitioned over the past few years into online assessments, so virtual assessments. So at this point, we're giving about 60% of our local assessments online through the platform that is now Performance Matters Unify OLA. Uh, 
so we give about over 280 tests a year. Um, but more importantly, the reason we purchased Performance Matters oh so many decades ago was really for the data warehouse capability <laughs> and the ability to disaggregate data quickly um, and make sure that we can actually drill down and target the students that need the most assistance. Okay, any questions by the board? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to renew the ongoing contract with Power School for the use of Performance Matters, fiscal impact dollar amount of $60,867.33, budget source ESSER 3 funds. I have, a, I have a motion to second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. Thank you very much. Have a nice summer. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. I'm sure I'll see you around. We'll see. We'll see you again. Yeah, we will. Oh, I'm being positive. <laughs> Seeing us again be positive. Next up. Next up will be elementary school digital licenses. President Smith, Dr. Salins, members of the board and the executive team. For the record, my name is Bridget Passon. I'm the English language arts supervisor for grades three through 12. I'm here tonight to make my annual request for materials needed for reading, English and language arts for our K through 12th grade classrooms. So I am agenda items 9.05 to 9.07. I'll just try to roll through them if that's helpful to you all. Okay, so we'll start with 9.05. This is for our elementary school digital license in grades K to 5, uh, requesting $83,087.85 for digital licenses to support um, Tier 1 instruction. So here's my question, Mr. Smith. Um, this is coming out of the FY23 unrestricted current expense, expense budget, mm -hmm. um, which we have not had passed yet. And I understand that we need to allocate these funds to get the ball rolling before July 1st. Is that correct? Is that why we're happy to buy them now? This is to, can we please have the approval and then when the funds are released, we are able to order immediately the next two levels have consumables attached to them, and with the supply chain issue, we're incredibly worried that they'll get stalled somewhere. So we're looking to get the approval now so we can order as close to June 10th as possible. And I think that should be acceptable. She can, we can be check on it, but from talking to commissioners at our budget hearings, everything looked pretty positive in my view, and I think Dr. Salem's can get them repeat, can ditto that. Well, I'm only asking the question to, on, you know, erring on the side of prudence about spending that much money before oh, yeah. this budget's passed. Well, I think it's something we're gonna have to have, and I, um, I think the county might have funded us by then anyway. Okay. Any further discussion? I just have a question about the name, mm -hmm. the Wonders 2014. Why is it 2014? I'm assuming it's been updated. <laughs> is that the so year? glad you asked? So we are piloting three new programs in our K in our pre-K through five classrooms next year, um, from three different vendors, all approved. They have been approved through the Leeds grant. They have met Ed Report's expectations. So we're really excited. We have 21 teachers from across the district who are willing to pilot um, two of them. So we're going to present them with three and then they get to pick the two that they like. Um, I don't know a ton about consumerism, but I know it's great to have comparison. So they will go through a very extended MOI process all year, and I will come to you um, next April with their recommendation for the purchase. So we are on it to update it. It does need updating. So Thanks. glad you asked to spend it. <laughs> And thanks, the leads were going to be able to do that. Yeah, yes, like all our vendors were approved. Yes, yes, for K to three. Yep. Any further discussion? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion uh, to purchase digital licenses uh, for the reading English language arts? And what did you call it? <laughs> reading English and language arts. Um, digital Wonders, licenses for Wonders digital, 2014. Wonders 214. <laughs> Fiscal impact dollar amount of $83,087.85, budget source FY23 unrestricted current expense fund. Second. A motion second. Any further discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you. I'll move on to 9.06 for middle school digital licenses and consumables. This is for our grades 6 through 8 ELA classrooms. We're asking for 106, 564,066 cents for their digital licenses and consumable textbooks. Ms. Towers, do 
was this taken into account when we did the budget that we would be yes this is under our um, standard licensing um, okay in prior so years all of these different things that are coming up yes just I'm gonna blanket my question all of this has already been in yes earmarked in, so. earmarked in the 23 budget okay yes, thank correct. you Okay. <laughs> Make a motion to purchase the digital licenses for the collections uh, material. Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount one hundred six thousand dollars five hundred sixty four sixty six cents. FY twenty three unrestricted current expense fund budget source. Second. That motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. The last one is 9.07. This is for our high school English classes, English 1 through English 4, for licenses and consumable textbooks. We are asking for 74343 and 45 cents to cover both high schools. Can I just roll with it, Mr. Smith? Just roll with it. Any, any, uh -huh. any discussion? <laughs> Go ahead, Tammy. <laughs> Make a motion to purchase digital licenses and consumable textbooks necessary for my perspectives. Fiscal mm -hmm. impact dollar amount $74,343.45. Budget source FY23 unrestricted current expense fund. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Have a nice evening and a great summer. Thanks. Thank you so yeah. much. Have a great summer. Be safe on your travel time. Yeah. I know you have a little drive. Good evening, Mr. Smith. Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, I am Amy Smith, supervisor, K-12 mathematics and gifted and talented. And I have the next three um, action items on your agenda for review for you to approve. The first one is our HMH Math 180. It is our intervention online and workbook resource for our middle school grades six through eight. Um, these are the the current curriculum materials that we use to support our students who are one to two grade levels in mathematics and they receive that intervention program there. It is earmarked as ESSER three funds for $22,896. Any questions by the board? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to uh, renew the contract for HMH Math 180 contract, fiscal impact dollar amount of $22,896, budget source ESSER 3 funds. Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Your next item is the Curriculum Associates iReady Diagnostic Testing. Currently for mathematics, grades three through five, we have this. Um, next year, we are rolling our curriculum that you approved for K to, K to two, and they will automatically have it. This diagnostic will now put in t assessments for grades six through eight mathematics and ELA, as well as K to five ELA reading diagnostics. It provides the state requirement for the early ed reading assessments. So we can use one company, one data assessment round. Um, it provides three checkpoints throughout the year as well as resources for learning plans for students who need acceleration as well as have learning gaps. It is airmarked from ESSER two funds for $110,329.80. Have any questions? I, I had just a couple. Mm -hmm. What is the, the the what's the professional development? What all is the, that entail for half the price? The I so the professional development with this is to provide the teachers in the ELA areas what are the ways the data comes out, how the data actually can inform instruction, and what are the instructional tools for it. It also provides our professional development for grades six through eight who have not received any of the curriculum or assessment training for mathematics and ELA. The professional development also gives us a couple checkpoints throughout the year where they come back and help us with 
particularly the mid-year data analysis support so that teachers know how to read the growth trends as well as how to then accelerate students who have made certain goals but may not have stretched as far as we would like or for those students who have stretched beyond what can we do to help support them and continue to move them forward in their academics particularly for students who have shown some gaps with our online learning between the last year and a half Thanks. and we have seen phenomenal progress in our grades three through five through those diagnostic and data analysis dives that we've done with our teachers and the progress of our students Great. thank you and then my other only question was I was just looking at numbers where it said the total building enrollment Yes. and then the license numbers and they don't match and I'm wondering why they don't match we always do around a 10 to 15 percent variability we have flexibility to move it around the county but we always do that because there's always influx of students that come in and come out so if a student transfers out that license cannot be transferred to a student who may then transfer in so you always have to have a certain cushion you can't go on exact numbers that are currently in the book and we have have to make projections of our incoming kindergartners and our incoming middle school students who some may be in private school setting right now but then they'll transfer in particularly for middle school rounds thanks you're welcome any further questions Ms. Harper. Mr. Smith, so I make a motion to approve the contract for iReady diagnostic diagnostic testing, fiscal impact dollar amount of one hundred ten dollars, one hundred ten thousand dollars to uh, three hundred twenty nine eighty cents. Budget source ESSER two funds. Second. Have a motion and second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Have it. And your last one. And my last one. My last one is in eight. Agile Minds Educational Holdings. This is our current grade six, seven geometry and algebra two mathematics curriculum. It is the resource that we use directly for our instruction. So we need our renewed contract this year um, for that. And this is coming out of our fiscal 23 unrestricted current expense funds for $94,508. You wanna ask a question? Any questions by the board? Ms. James, is this already in the budget? Yes. Okay. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the Agile Mind contract renewal. Fiscal impact dollar amount $94,508. Budget source FY23 unrestricted current expense fund under contract services. Second. Second. I have a motion second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Ayes have it. Thank you very Thank much. You. Have a wonderful evening. Same. We are Thank at 802. So Mr. Smith, do you want to see if there's any Yeah, more? we're going to take a uh, go and move around this because I did tell the public that I would open uh, citizens petition and public comment so they didn't have to stay with us late. Um, I have nobody in the audience. Mr. Pender, could you check the hallway? Empty. Oh, it sounded hollow out there. Good night, Mr. Smith. <laughs> Josh, I think you're going to be up. Okay. Okay. We have nobody here for uh, stay over for citizens participation or public comment, so we're going to keep on moving. Thank you, sir. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening, President Smith, our Salins Board Executive Team. My name is Josh Combs. I'm the Supervisor of Technology. I have four action items tonight. The first one is purchase approval for Dell Chromebooks. This is for the fifth to eighth grade refresh. Um, Why are we buying them instead of leasing them? Well, we're paying for Esser, so obviously you can, you can save money by obviously paying them straight up versus leasing. I mean, that is always an option, but obviously you have to pay financing There's, charges for that. Aren't, aren't we leasing some down, some now? Coming out, school, right? current budget. Coming out of our current budget, we are le leasing Chromebooks right now. <sighs> well, that would be the last one. Um, we purchased one to two, we purchased three and four. The last one, we did a lease for fifth eight. So this would be the last year you would have made that payment and then we would be starting again 
if we were to lease or straight out purchase them and then not have to do a lease for the next four years. We're using the SR3 funds, so it, Correct. that's something that won't last for two or three years. And now I see we also have to purchase in separate insurance that's coming up. Yes, what that the second one, which is WAG, is, is the um, accidental damage protection that a manufacturer does not cover. They cover very, very little, and it's actually more expensive to buy it from a manufacturer than this third party, so which we've been using. How long is the warranty on these since we're purchasing these yeah. outright? It looks like four years, it basically four the entire years. length of the... Uh, okay, but it doesn't doesn't cover accidents and no. falling off kitchen tables and no. dropped in this hallway. Uh, theft, loss, power, uh, vandalism. Okay. Um, that's not covered. Unlimited uh, screen damage, um, as long as you have the case on it. Okay. Um, Do we have a, a number of what it, like how many Chromebooks over four years have we needed that extended warranty for that was not covered by the... We use it every week. <laughs> Every single week. I'm sorry. So, there, was, you guys, there are boxes coming. We are using that depot. We send things to that depot and back from that depot every single week. Do we use then the on-site, the support that the hardware warranty extended and the next day business on-site extended? Yeah, we, it's kind of a mixture. If we can get it done through the Dell, we'll get it through Dell. If we can get it through WAG, we go through through WAG, uh, which the, the, sorry, that's Fourth Avenue Group. The, that's the... That's called by for short for the initials, but it depends on which way you which way you can go. See, some things you can you can go through straight through Dell. You can get it done faster. You can get it, go through their depot. Uh, you can have one site technicians come with them. Um, we're the group. I do have to send it out or ask for the parts, and then we do do it. So it's kind of a combination of both. Whatever we can get done the fastest, but we use both every single week. Did we have other contracts? And I only say this because mm -hmm. I looked up this particular. Um, computer, the Chromebook on different websites, and it was about $100 cheaper. And I got oh, that doesn't include the case. Uh, well, the case was, that was the clamshell. It's not, it's it's a drop tech. I was going to say, we have those rugged cases. It's $50. It's it's a hard case drop tech. Right, so you but can, still, that's less than. It's $50 just for the 30 case. 30 to 50 online, and then the Chromebook. Yeah, 50 for, 50 for the case. 239 um, on Amazon and 292 at Walmart. The ones you find on Amazon also have a one-year warranty. They also had the accidental right. damage service, though, on it, too, for K through 12. I just didn't know if we got right. other. The thing like accidental there. from, like, a manufacturer, it won't, it'll cover screen pairs. It won't cover electric theft, loss. It won't cover anything. Like It won't cause vandalism. Right, but that's the next contract. Right. I was just going with this. Did we the first one does not. The first contract has no accidental because it's cheaper to buy it through. Right, but I was saying the ones I looked at had a year of K through 12 accidental damage service that was attached to it as well. So I just didn't know if we had looked at, at other contracts or if we just used No, no, no. I, I, we've used these guys before. I also looked at companies like Securely. There's other companies similar to this company. Basically, that's what they do with their party insurance. Mm -hmm. The pricing is the same and what they give us is the same. Like Miami-Dade County uses a, a different company down closer to them. It's the same exact service for the same exact cost. It's about $20, $24 a unit per year and you get all those um, coverages. Uh, unlimited theft, you know, if somebody steals it, can we push support? They'll give us the money to buy a new one. And you don't get that from the manufacturer. You lose it, that's on us. So. That's in the next contract though, right? I'm talking, okay. Thanks. You good? Any further questions? Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the purchase of the 2800 Dell Chromebook uh, fiscal impact dollar amount of, really is it? $1,117,200 budget source ESSER 3 funds. Second. That moves a second. Any further questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. I have four, four and one nay. She's got it. She got it. Okay, we're on. Keep on now. We're on our uh, purchase approval for insurance. Just as a back, kind of back question, it, we'll cover both. How much staff do we have on hand to help support our students if they have technical <laughs> difficulties? Or, is, or are we strictly going through the company when we have issues? We have total of, including me, nine people in the technology department. Are you guys traveling to schools? Mm -hmm. 
are one to one, one through 12. So any repair from teacher to a student is, is us, which is why we try to utilize a, a depot so we can send things out because it's getting harder and harder to fix things on site. Um, it's just it's too time consuming. We just have too many repairs. So what happens when you give children electronic equipment. Yep. Other counties are, that are new to this, we're, we're not obviously new to this, um, but other counties on the Western Shore who are new to this program are learning real fast how, you know, right. rough it can be right. on our Other counties machines. have either one-to-one -one or whatever, but they typically didn't let kids take them home. That's correct. Until the pandemic, and so that right. makes life a lot different. That's correct. Yeah. Mr. Smith, I make for, a motion. Mm -hmm. Uh, for the approval of the purchase of Worth Avenue Group Insurance for the 2800 Dell Chromebooks, fiscal impact dollar amount of $257,600, budget source ESSER 3 funds. Second. Second. Any further discussion? That's the same number we just purchased. Uh, call for a vote. All those in favor say aye. 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 Nay. Four, one, one day. You're still going. Sorry, uh, the next one we have for Power School SIS. This will be the actual student information system. Um, MS stands for uh, maintenance support, so that's basically it's the main login that we use it to store the grades, attendance, all the demographics. So that's uh, that product. And then EMS allows us, uh, this company does all of our updates over the weekend, so we're not down. We back up 365 days a year. Uh, they provide us a test server, and so we can test new updates and uh, new features uh, without messing up production data. Any questions by the board? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the purchase of the Power School SIS EMS CMS MS contract for one year, fiscal impact dollar amount $53,758.31, budget source the FY 2023 technology software licensing budget. Second. Second. Any of those, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Nay. Four to one. Our last one. Uh, mm -hmm. Last one is uh, power school enrollment registration subscription. Um, we've been doing this for the past five years or so. This is our online, we call it back to school forms. We like have our nickname to it. So this is the product that provides those online registration for our kids either returning to school or new registration. Makes life easy. Yes, quick Do have any there. questions by the board? Nope. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to renew the ongoing contract with power school enrollment registration. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $26,323.76. Budget source FY 2023 technology software licensing budget. Second. A motion is second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay, I think you. Uh... Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you, Josh. Thank Take you. care. You too. Have a good summer. Mr. Pender. Good evening, President Smith, Dr. Salins, board members, executive team. For the record, Sid Pender, uh, Chief Operating Officer. I have several, several yellow sheets for you <laughs> tonight. You spent a lot of money. And I will uh, be jumping from many different categories. To put but you it won't spend as much hats. as that guy just did. No, no, no. <laughs> That's why I'm following him. <laughs> um, I uh, bring before you tonight a, a seeking approval for um, security camera server replacements. Um, it's an approval of a contract with Data Networks to purchase 14 servers to replace our existing security camera servers um, for all schools within our system. Um, we're utilizing the Maryland uh, Education uh, Enterprise Consortium hardware contract. Basically, we're looking to have 14 Dell PowerEdge uh, servers um, that were installed in 2014. Obviously, technology you know has exceeded that. Um, we were able to get the Power Edge with a seven-year warranty, um, RAID 6 data storage, and a iDirect card um, that allows us to remotely control the servers and see the health, um, the hardware health. Um, also, with the RAID 6, it uh, preserves the video for us. It has backup servers, so if one server goes down, 
we're not losing all that video that if something happened, you know, 15, 16 days ago. Um, so we're also going to be able to, with the larger memory storage, store our, all of our video data for 30 days. Um, because we do record nonstop from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and then after 6 p.m. it goes to motion only. We found that with motion sometimes an incident would happen in school and based upon where it exactly occurred you might have actually missed part of the event so that's why we go live from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Uh, to record. Um, this is we're seeking funding for our for I'm sorry $86,030. This will come out of our state fund where um, the states have gifted money to uh, the Board of Education so there's enough there to cover the replacement of the servers um, we did compare prices from other cooperative um, the Carroll County uh, public network which we purchase a lot from this was um, significantly lower than that one um, our contact will be replacing, if you approve, will be doing the work for us this summer so we don't have to um, outsource that. So that will keep the cost down also. What, 30 days, that's reasonable to store? I mean, that's, that's about that's average of what, what the school need. systems do, yeah. And a state fund, is that an endowment we have? or, or What's that, sir? A state fund. Can you say, tell me, explain that, what, I, uh, the, what the state fund? state fund, um, when somebody puts in their will, you know. It's an endowment, it's money yes, that's yes, been willed to us. Yep. So I believe we had three. Yes, this year. So. Uh, this year. Nice. So we were trying to touch every kind of school. I mean, every, not every kind, but every school throughout the system with that kind of. So some of them will come in, but most of them are open. It's not for one thing or something. If, if I mean, the wishes of the grant. No, there was no, it wasn't tied to anything. Okay, so. That's the first time I've ever heard of an estate fund. That's pretty cool. I like we that. We had three this year. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right on. That's nice. Aaron, can I ask a question? Do we have, is there a policy on how long we're supposed to keep this data? Is there a requirement? You're talking about video? Yeah. Now, well, let me go back. If we, I'm talking when I say 30 days, everything being recorded. If a principal sees something in their school, they can actually go in and, and pull that and save it and download it. That's not gonna go away in 30 days. Okay. Sorry. The only reason I ask yeah. is, like, if there's an event that happens, if we have to go back past 30 days, do we have a requirement somewhere that says we need to keep the data long? Sorry, it's a oh, habit of what I do. We have seven years, five years, depending on the type of data it is. That has to be kept. I just want to know if there's a policy or requirement. Ms. Benton, uh, uh, Darren Burns for the record, Board Council. Um, I'm not aware of a, a Queens County Public Schools policy directly on point, but there is a Maryland Records Retention Manual, which MSDE publishes that, as I understand it is, and I think Ms. Hudak may be aware of this from practice in the field, it's probably this thick and it talks about everything from the FERPA records to uh, discipline records in particular. Um, I think most schools follow whatever is in that manual with respect to what they retain, and I don't want to speak you know, off the cuff with what that is. Um, but unlike emails, which might have a, um, a retention policy of 30 days, as some have mentioned, unlike FERPA, which would require you to keep student records and student-related records for the entire length of time the student is with you, including possibly up to 21, um, the, the, the general rule is going to be absent a policy. You look to that Maryland manual for guidance, and then beyond that, if you want to establish your own policy, you would look to include such things in it. But I'm not aware that you all have have one at this time. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. And last question. So do we have, are these raids in every school individually? Are the systems in each school? Yes, we have one standard system throughout the, uh, in every school. And we also, it's also tied into MVIEW. Mm -hmm. So if we do have some kind of active assailant right. um, or something that goes on within our schools, law enforcement can automatically pull it up um, and view it. So we're one of the few school systems that, that have that tied into it. Basically the same thing you see on the Bay Bridge, you know, with those types. And where's the failover fail over to? Is it in the same building, same system, or is it someplace Back else? Back here. Okay. Yep. So we have backup here. So our administrators at each school, if there was an instant of somebody falling or something happening, they would then, by 
policy or not policy by I guess practice what, mm -hmm. practice been told to archive it yep. and then it's there for the record yep. and then one of the part of the reason we want to do it this during the summertime is basically we're not having as many activities in the building right and we want to make sure that when we do that switch over <laughs> that we're able to have the ones that are saved or archived you know they successfully get transferred over we have had some instances um, with the current servers that we have when they go down there's no backup with, with the new system here, there's two um, systems on it, so there's some redundancy there with that. Okay. Very good. Any other board questions? I, I, just a quick question. I know that the um, PowerEdge R540 is a second generation Intel, and the next one after that and on are third generation Intel. Does that make much difference, and did we ever price out? I mean, I Hang on one second. He's gone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, I was going to refer that to, to Mr. Combs. Um, I, I will say he put a lot of work in this comparing um, okay. the different ones. Uh, we, he was able really to get us a better warranty and get us uh, better data storage on this compared to uh, the other ones that we were looking at. I was actually Great. very surprised. Thanks. Yes, ma'am. Any further questions? Mr. Smith, may I uh, make a motion to approve the contract with Data Networks to purchase 14, 14 servers to replace our existing security camera servers? Fiscal impact dollar amount of $86,030. Budget source, the state fund. Second. Motion and second. All those favor say aye. 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 You're wrong, Mr. Pender. <laughs> yes, sir. Um, uh, the next item I have before you is. Um, Approval of a contract with um, Optima Inc. to purchase custom, custom retrofit whiteboards at Queens County High School. Um, uh, Optima Inc. Uh, will provide the custom retrofit whiteboards to replace chalkboards that we still have in yes. Queens County High School. <laughs> um, uh, this will allow us for use dry erase markers for teachers and also, believe it or not, being able to use the LCD projector. Uh, because if you go in there now, I mean, Ms. Pudor, I can attest to it. I mean, people have sheets of paper hanging up no. so they can actually we see. And I will say uh, this is um, a sole source contract um, in the amount for $41,309.10, and it will come out of the ESSER 2 account. Um, there is a um, sole source procurement justification form attached, and in reality, this is the only company that makes um, custom fit boards. We can go there and buy a regular, you know, generic one, but the custom fit, it's the only company that we can find that produces them. Um, again, it's for 41000 $309, if you kind of average it out, it's about $700 to $900 a board. So you're looking at 44 boards going through this school. Further questions by the board? Yep. Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the contract with Optima Inc. for the purchase of custom retrofit whiteboards at Queen Anne's County High School. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $41,309.10. Budget source, ESSER 2 funds. Second. Okay. Uh, motion is second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, ayes have it. Okay, thank you. Um, the next several ones deal with uh, the purchasing of new buses by different LLC members. Um, the first one is um, LMS Bus Service is looking to purchase two new school buses for the 22-23 school year. Um, the two new buses will re uh, replace the existing 15-year buses 9808 and 9908. Um, they do go out of service on August 28, 2022. Um, if you're unfamiliar with it, if you can have a bus in the state of Maryland between 12 to 15 years. It was 12, they moved it to 15. Um, generally speaking, if the LLC member can show us that they've had some um, you know, problems with it, some mechanical issues, we do you know, allow them to replace it in 12th, 13th, or 14th year. Um, you mainly see that up north where they're putting on more miles in the Sellersville Churchill area compared to a Ken Island, which is a minimal run. It's an increase in the PVA. Yeah, so the new PVA, it's going to be um, around $22,700 per bus. Per bus per year compared to, uh, I did look it up, it was $14,000 when these were put into. Um, and I 
that's that that was 12 years ago. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's 12 years right. ago. That's what they were getting. And we have budgeted for the increase. Yeah, we, we have. We'll bring a budget amendment for that. Uh, uh huh. Thank you. We have a list of mm -hmm. replacements. Let, let me ask you a question. This could be for all of them. What happens if they order a bus? I'm assuming they haven't ordered it until you tell them they can, right? That's correct. They're going to get these buses by August 28th? I will say LNS probably no, mm -hmm. but he does have a larger fleet that he's able to put out there, um, you know, to support that. But at this point, I, I would say it's going to be hard pressed. But what I'm, I might ask a question for just not just LNC, but even if there's some single bus, whatever. So you'll see if what, what happens if they would September. have to rent. They would have to rent one from uh, the other LLC members or. If we can't allow that bus to go another month or two. Oh, no, no. Uh -huh. Once it hits that deadline, it, it's done. But there are, we, we, we know this could happen. Yes, sir. Sometimes we can go to the larger districts that mm -hmm. um, have buses that they, in their policy, they might say it's still 12 years, mm -hmm. and we could purchase some used buses that we could use sure. for three years, and we've done that to make that, if we have to like, bridge the gap. Um, it's just like a lot of times that their buses aren't the same sizes as ours because they're um, used differently because ours are more royal than. But we there's creative ways to try to get some filler and gaps in there. You'll see in the next several um, yellow sheets that um, there are eight paid spare buses within the four LLCs that so they're able a, to use. A, Once they get to that 11th year, they're allowed to have eight total amongst the four LLCs. Okay. And who established that? It's been in the contract for... Oh, it's a part of the contract yes. that they're allowed to have eight. Mm -hmm. But wouldn't it behoove them to have more than eight? Or is it there? They set that standard. Sorry to digress. No, you're fine. No, they basically set that standard. It okay. was seven in the last contract. We went went up to eight, but you know, don't forget, you know, you, you are paying. Mm -hmm. Right. That's eight thousand dollars. The right. PBA on yeah. each exactly. so. bus sitting there. Yes. Okay. Yep. Thank you. But it also students have to come to school every day and if there's not a bus available there's another issue yeah, that's correct. and a safety issue yep. i mean so you know it would be nice to have just the right number but you can't go that thin sometimes uh, i tell you the i just looked the other day the cost of uh production of a bus has gone up 13 <coughs> percent sure i mean what it, hasn't mm -hmm. and yeah, they can't hasn't get them on time i mean it can't be up to six months i heard that last time oh, it six months a year it can be up to a year. Yeah, it's, it really can it's be. It's pretty rough right now. Yeah. Uh, I know. Okay. We have this. Yes. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve LNS bus service to purchase two new school buses for the 2023 school year? Its fiscal impact dollar amount is a PVA. And the budget source is it's budgeted for, with that amendment. A motion is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Do have a do we have a second? Yes, second. one sure. on. Sure. All right, back there. Throw it out there. All right, thank you. The next one is um, approval for Mr. Eric Hansa with the Bay Area Transportation LLC to purchase a new bus. Um, this uh, for the 22-23 school year. This will replace bus uh, 0511. Uh, to see the approval to bus 0511, that will be used as a paid spare, one of the eight that I was just talking about. Okay. Um, again, the PVA would be incorporated into that um, after in the 11th year, they are allowed to have in paid spare. Mr. Smith, may I? I know we have four LLCs. They work together as far as sharing buses and renting buses if necessary. That mm -hmm. if either they, one that we're not, you know, I don't, I don't want to. It's good to have that extra ones, but it's also good they got to help us out yeah. by renting each other. Yeah, basically, it's based off of the number of buses you have in each LLC. So okay. some get two, and some would only get one based upon the number of buses. Like. Queen Anne's bus line is a pretty small group, so they would only get like one paid spare bus. But if the other one had one, they could rent from one of the other ones yes, if they sir. had to. Yes. Gotcha. And if we have buses, they can also. Sorry. That's okay, Mr. Smith. May I make a motion for the approval of Bay Area Transportation LLC to purchase a new bus? Uh, fiscal impact dollar amount PVA. Budget source, yes. Second. <laughs> Do I have a second? <laughs> Hey, we're, we're getting this thing on back. This is good. This is good. All, all those in favor say aye. 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 
Okay. Um, next one is Mr. Clarence Pritchett of Bay Area Transportation is seeking approval to purchase a new bus to replace 3711, which would hey, be used as a paid spare. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve <laughs> Bay Area Transportation LLC to purchase a new school bus? Fiscal impact dollar amount PVA, budget source, yes. Second. This is the same as everything else, so we're just going to call for vote. All those favor say aye. 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 Okay, next one, Mr. Joe Wheeler, Bay Area Transportation LLC, is seeking approval to purchase a used bus to be used as an unpaid spare. So they, he would not get paid, you know, a PVA or the um, amount for the uh, spare bus. Basically, sure. a cost associated with us would be the insurance and um, uh, the radio on there. And really what this does is, when schools call up to say, hey, we want to go on a field trip, you know, there's buses available to take them on a field trip because all the other buses are on a route. Right. Um, so no cost really associated to us with that. What do we do with our ca cameras on the side? They come off the old buses and put them on new buses, our uh, red light cameras? Yes. Yep. Bus patrol will take care of that. Yeah. <clears throat> Okay, do I have a motion? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve Bay Area Transportation LLC to purchase a used bus for the 2023 school year to be used as an unpaid spare, no fiscal impact dollar amount. Second. I have a motion to second. All those in say aye. 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 <laughs> it was her turn. Okay, Mr. Pender, out of the bus business. Okay, one last one here. Mr. Raymond Aaron of the Queen Anne's County Bus Line LLC seeking approval to purchase a new bus to replace bus 0309, which okay, will stop. be used as a pay. Got it. Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to approve the Queen Anne's Bus Line LLC to purchase a new bus for the 2023 school year, fiscal impact dollar amount PVA, budget source, yes. Second. Any questions? All those in favor say aye. 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 Okay, on to school safety. Um, the last one that I have before you is approval of a contract with Navigate 360 uh, to purchase Navigate 360 emergency management suite along with the 360 interactive maps and floor plans. Um, Navigate 360 provides comprehensive sa safety preparedness software um, that helps school districts and um, other organizations operate their safety plans. Um, it allows us to manage our safety plans, the operation plans, drill management, staff safety training, digital flip charts. Um, really the major piece to this is also the reunification process. Um, and I'll speak to that in a minute. With this program, basically what I do right now is everything we have is on a thumb drive or it's in a binder. And in order to get that to the sheriff's department, the state police, um, all of those, it's just not efficient. Um, with the Navigate 360, the program, I give the link to the 911 dispatchers or the sheriff's department. They were able to come in and actually do a 360 view of the classroom um, to see the layout, the floor plans of it. You know, each year when we make changes, I have to go in and physically make the changes on all the systems. And with this, it's a one-step process. Um, and then you'll have real-time data. With this program, you're also allowed to interact um, with alerts, alarms. The teachers can have it on their cell phones, laptops. You know, nobody's going to stop to pull up the binder, you know, and, and see what's going on. Um, it's really a beneficial program for us to, to go cloud-based. Um, you know, the reunification part of it is what keeps me up at nighttime because that's after the incident is over and how are we accounting for everything. With this program, we're able to sync up our database um, with this so that everybody's on one single format and we're not kind of looking through papers to find this and find that. This is a sole source contract. Um, I've attached the documentation with it. Um, there's really no other when you start getting this specialized, there's not many companies out there that, that perform this kind of work. Um, I think it will really take us in the, the right direction that we need to go, um, you know, to the next level of school safety. Um, so I'm sorry, I'm seeking approval um, for $76,498. Um, that will 
25,000 of that, we wrote a grant for the Maryland Center for School Safety um, that they awarded to us. So the remainder of that would be taken out of the FY22 maintenance unrestricted account. I have a question. Sure. Under elementary school, we have a quantity of 10, but we only have eight. What are the other two buildings that are being covered? The Board of Education and Arise. Okay, just checking. And I had a quick question about the one-time service. So the bulk of it is just the one time, but this is a three-year contract, and so the renewal contract is only going to be for approximately 19000 for the next two years. Is that correct? Yeah, it'll be a th for three years, yes. Right, but we don't have to pay that that one. That uh, that's correct. That's correct. the one time. Okay, that's cool. Correct. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Any further questions? Mr. Smith, I make a motion to approve the contract with Navigate 360 to purchase Navigate, Navigate 360 Emergency Management Suite, along with Navigate 360 Interactive Maps and Floor Plans. Fiscal impact dollar amount of $76,498. Budget source FY22 Maryland Safety School Grant of $25,000. The, re the remainder coming from FY22 Maintenance Unrestricted Fund. Second. A motion second. All today say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Pender. Thank, thanks, Mr. You. Pender. Hey, thanks for your time. <laughs> That's it. You cost too much money. You're out. Okay. I think if we add it up, he came close to the guy. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, Dr. Salins. Yes, a... uh, board members, on March 22nd, I received um, notification from the State Ethics Commission um, in reference to required amendments to the Board of Education's ethics policy. So this is coming for a one and only it's not doesn't have to go through the whole read policy because um, under our new policy for policies the board has the purview to approve it um, in one read because it is a, a requirement by the state. We don't have a choice. So the actual um, policy itself only had one minor change which was a definition. Um, most of the change was was dictated in the regulation, but I just want to um, personally thank um, and give Mrs. Andrews a shout out because she put a lot of time and energy into this. There's a lot of work that, that goes around this and um, she did an amazing job. So I, I bring to you today the actual policy, which has a very minor change in it. Again, most of the changes are impacted in the regulation, which is under the superintendent purview. But I'm asking for a favorable vote on the um, um, change to the policy for the required amendments to the Board of Education ethics policy. I just had a question. It has nothing to do with the writing. It's, it's, a, sure. it's a great job. But it says that the panel consists of three members appointed by the board. Who are our three members? I know that Carrie. I don't. Is I don't have an opportunity to work uh, with ethics, them. So ethics Carrie board. does. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Diotis, Elsie uh, Lawrence, and. Elsie Lawrence is an ex-board member. Dick Diotis is a businessman that lives in uh, Bennett Point, and I don't know the third one. Do you know the third one? Yeah, I'm, having a, I'm having a... But they, <laughs> senior um, moment. I've, I've, I've not talked to yet. Ms. Carey's been great at not answering a couple questions that I have. Well, so if the three is a three-year, no, how, yeah, three-year term. So when are they up? Yeah. I mean, it's been think up for 10 I was years. Gonna say, some of them have <laughs> past due, and I know that Carrie, because again, this, this doesn't right, under the right. purview of me, Carrie has been working with Darren to look at those terms and see how we move about to replace those that may need to step off and um, we are very grateful for their service. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Miss, Miss, um, Miss Natalie Ford. Thank and you. I will say um, prior to our meeting with them this year, um, and I think mainly due to COVID, they have not met for several years. Um, they're all very um, capable and, and willing to still serve and very pleased to do so. Yeah. But so the few questions I've asked you, you just get them on the horn and they just kind of... Yeah, they're, all, they're all very accessible. Cool. Yes, thanks. But the one thing I think we should keep an eye on, since we do have three in there, how long terms you said they were? Three Usually three years. We should I hope they're staggered because you would not want that whole board to go out at one right. time. And I don't we, think no, they no. are right now. Well, anyway. that's the only thing I would like to look at is if we did a... If they aren't staggered, do three-year terms. <laughs> one would do a one, two, and three. Three. So we would review them each year, might renew them, might not, but you would not have the whole board going out at one time because I think yes. there's some historical knowledge. Yeah, I, I institutionally I agree, speaking, yeah. yes, I agree with that. It is, not, it is not completely unusual for school systems to 
have ethics panel members stay on past their appointed terms because of either difficulty of finding volunteers or, as was mentioned, sometimes things happen that cause slippage in the time periods. What I recommend to boards who are trying to reset that is if you don't have a policy, that is the, uh, an actual board policy that establishes the terms, go ahead and do that and include that staggered term process as you see fit. And that allows any members who are finally ready to finish that extended duty <laughs> to come off, but not all at the same time. And they can renew for another time if but they want well. to, but, mm -hmm. but he would not be. But if you have a policy, you can help reset that. I think that's something this board should look into. Yes. Or Dr. Salins. Uh, absolutely. We can um, move to create that policy. I'm looking at Dr. Kibler because he's, right? <laughs> Nobody behind you. So, um, Our so policy yes. guru. Yes, we will, we will um, move in that direction. Okay, any further questions board. for the superintendent? Mr. Smith, may I make a motion to accept the changes to the Code of Ethics and Conflict of Interest Policy 104? Second. A motion second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. The ayes have it. Thank you. Okay, that is the Ryan ends up. Our next meeting work session will be June the 15th. Um, <coughs> Our regular next scheduled meeting will be July the 13th. That is moved one week out because of July the 4th holiday. So everybody needs to know that's July the 13th. And then we will have another uh, work session on uh, July the 20th. Do you have any other comments from the board? I do, Mr. Smith, if you just indulge me just a few seconds. Um, I had a parent um, ask me about, in all places, the food lion, um, why this board was supporting sex education in kindergarten. And I have, in all my years of being here, never heard that Queen Anne's County had any kind of curriculum with sex education in kindergarten. And you've been here almost a year. <laughs> we, we do not. Thank you. We do not. Um, the Maryland State Department of Education came out with recommendations to districts um, as it relates to many different things. And, um, but they were recommendations, so a district doesn't have to, by law, um, adopt those. We um, do not do that. We have um, appropriate per COMAR, which says that you have to start, you may start before fifth grade, but you have to start at fifth grade level, which we do, which we've had in our curriculum for many, many, many years. <coughs> we also um, have a seventh grade curriculum, and then we do so in high school, and that that's under um, uh, Michael Page and um, his departments for as it relates to science and health. Um, but parents have a choice for their student to opt out. Absolutely, correct. absolutely. In They're fifth, seventh, seventh and, and high school. Okay. That's exactly right. They have an opportunity to opt out um, and they are notified in the beginning of the school year what that's gonna be like. They can opt out then and then they'll have another opportunity right before they begin to teach units. Um, they will send home something to parents and the parents are aware that, and the parents can come in and review exactly what they're going to be teaching if they want to view that ahead of time. Um, I, I've heard the same issue and um, I did meet with Dr. Salins and Mike at a meeting and we are going to have a discussion on this uh, and a presentation to the oh, board okay. in about a month uh, regarding that um, and I think a couple of things are we do not teach anything below fifth grade it is when it is there is something going out to the parents for opt out it's done two times and they can also review anything that's done but some of this is state mandated that we can't do but it is in our opinion or i think dr Samuel's opinion that it's they the state and you can read this thing and says it could start early mm -hmm. but it has to be done in fifth grade and above that is not being supported by Dr. Salem's yeah. or this board at this, at, and I would We are following that. Comar. Right. Um, and, I, and I would like to also say that since our conversation that um, Michael Page and Matt Evans will also be joining right. him because sometimes their programs tend to overlap mm -hmm. and we do a lot of other prevention programs. We have an ACES program. We have day, ACES for the teachers to teach them about some adverse childhood experiences and how they can deal with that. We have a DARE program. We have a life skills, what's called BOTVIN. Um, so there's, we have opioid, um, you know, um, programs and things like that. So there's a lot of different things that come together. And I think it would behoove the board to hear from both of those programs because I think it would be very helpful. Okay, good. Yeah. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Do I have anything else good for the system this evening? 
Have a motion to adjourn? So moved. So. Can I get a second? Second. second. All those Third. in favor? Aye. Aye. Got that one done. <laughs> Thank you all very much.